This is the cr most crowded room studio we've ever had. There's so many eyeballs staring at me right now. But this is Matthew. Hi. This is yet another episode of The Ungrown Ups. This is episode 82, otherwise known as our... 82nd episode. But it's... A lot of eyes in here. I got Ryan sitting across from me, but we also have two human guests we to do. my to my right, and two uh, canine guests yeah, canines. to my left. I don't think they're going to comment much, but they are here. But they are giving me dirty looks. And they're <laughs> breathing kind of heavy. It's a little awkward. Yeah, Ripley is a side eye for yeah. sure. Yeah. So this yeah. is this is interesting in this new setup because one, we've never really had this many people or bodies in the same room this is kind of nice no i mean we've had four people yes but it's been four the, people and not the rest of the entourage so to speak yes so let me introduce everybody else is in the room one is is colin to my right say hi colin hello and then two is my son grayson which hey there you go hey uh, don't be too enthused yeah so colin is a guest we've been trying to get on forever but because we have lives outside of this and that's not true. Well, we're ungrown up and irresponsible. I guess that's probably more, more accurate. True. Yeah. I had some ungrowing to do before I was ready to be. <laughs> <laughs> had to go backwards and but go forwards. If you guys remember, uh, I don't know, right around before the holidays, yep. um, Colin had sent us a card game called Hoopties. And it's kind of like uh, Cards Against Humanity in the fact that you, you're drawing cards and you're trying to come up with combinations that of cars and car modifications that are that are humorous. And so we've gotten quite a bit of fun out of the game, even though we've never actually played a full hand. <laughs> that, that's good. I mean, we've more just read stuff. Yeah. We had more fun just flipping through the cards and looking at the the combinations that are possible. Did you actually come up with every single card scenario? So this project actually was birthed uh, in traffic on the 55 freeway with uh, one of my best car buddies and best buddies in life, George. All right. And what we would do is we, you know, you, t you talk shit. You yeah. Know? You're in traffic, you're right. talking shit. And we kind of came up with this idea and literally with a Google Doc on his phone, we just kept going, oh, look at that over there. That's stupid. <laughs> you, know? you know, I'm always dumping on him for liking Chevy uh, SSR. Is that that pickup truck? Those are so bad. <laughs> so, thank you. Yeah, I, they're I mean, awful. I mean, Even I, I think they're ugly. Yeah, yeah there you go. It's because you have good taste <laughs> and you were raised right. Um, but, you know, we came across a lot of stuff that we found humorous and we just kind of have the same sense of humor about it. And it, it just birthed into what this is. And uh, I did the design work for it and, and we, we had it made. Are any of the car combinations based on actual things you saw in real life, like a Prius with a big wang or just like some of these combinations that are possible? Unfortunately, yes. Yeah, I mean, that, <laughs> yeah. that did happen sometimes. That's uh, funny. A lot of it is just being so immersed in car nerd stuff. You know. Now, now you're also a a Toyota Corolla enthusiast. Did you play nice and try to avoid any sort of disparagement of your your car of choice? Oh yeah, or is it all fair game? I, yeah, I think the the playing nice is is going harder on that. Okay. Those. Yeah. All so right. you know, we we make fun of our own. It's kind of how the Corolla people work. I used to have two Corollas. Did you really? Yeah, I had two. Really? Yep. Before or after the Mustang? Oh, well after. Okay. At the same time I had my RX-7. Oh, all right. Yeah. Which was, generation RX-7? I had an FC. Okay. Yeah. Turbo or NA? Non-turbo. Oh, good. For but you. it was a weird, it was an NA car that had the turbo brakes, the aluminum hood, all oh, the aluminum nice. suspension pieces, yeah. the control arms and everything. Mm -hmm. But it was an NA car. No rear wiper either. Really? Yeah, no sunroof. It was a weird, it was a like a sport before yeah. the gtu or whatever that was before the the gxu whatever that was whatever yeah. before that ever came out yeah it was that interesting yeah it was super rad well that's good turbo rotaries are a bad way to live yeah i mean they're fine if you yeah. don't but they're have also to fun ever work for that very them. brief window when everything's working yeah right. if you can get them in the right ownership band yes they're perfect yes right yes. it's possible yeah as, my, in, as in the first owner yeah right exactly <laughs> or right after somebody's rebuilt it and dealt with everything for you true true there you go so with this hoopties card game is this your first card game that you've designed and, and shipped? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, it was. I thought, yeah, hey, how hard could it be? You put some cards together, you write some rules. I'm kind of curious as the whole yeah. process. I mean, like, like the game development process. Yes. Are you just yeah. Googling like vendors that can do card game manufacturing? Are you looking for certain things or is it just friend of a friend kind of deal so uh, there was a lot of annoying research for finding the right vendor to make it um that that part is is the least fun part of of most things yeah it's right. the business side of things yeah yeah the 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 way that it, we're actually able to get it made i've just done so much weird stuff over the years i know that feeling you know you know you you, you, you kind of get a little bit of a uh, 
a, a jack in your card deck for a bunch of different things. So I worked in a, a program called InDesign a lot back yeah. when I was yep. a young designer at, at Stillin, which is like the worst place to work on the planet. You know what's funny? I have heard more than one person say it's a terrible. Uh, I've heard it from multiple people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, every time I land at John Wayne, I'm like, oh, it's still in there. Yeah, and yeah. I, it's fun. I've bought stuff there. I've been in the building many, many times, uh-huh. but I've never had to work there. Yeah, so. did, did it play ominous music when you walked in? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you were at Stillin for a bit. Yeah, so when I was a young designer, uh, you know, they said, hey, we need to make a box for our brake rotors. I mean, I'd, I'd never designed a box before yeah. and, you know, had to go through the process and learn there and then learning how to make the layouts for sending off to different types of printers. I just right. learned over the years. Yeah. It's super weird that like, I know this sounds bizarre, but you never really think that somebody had to design the box that something came in. Yeah. And right? packaging design is this whole, oh, it's a whole world. Yeah. But it's bizarre. Cause you don't, I mean, like I said, you don't think about it. You just it's tear like, that thing over. Yeah. This came in a box like this came in a box, but somebody had to design this mm-hmm. and figure out like, what's the best format for this thing to come in. And it's weird. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's all kind of trial and error stuff while you learn, like even yeah. the, when you talk about the game design part, we just printed them out on little crappy pieces of paper and just went, tried went, it. went in a conference room on yeah. work hours and designed our, <laughs> our bodies in and tested it out to see what made sense. But I also That's like how, how respectful you are of trademark use. Like, I mean, the brand's like the caddy from Ghostbusters. Well, I mean, you Trademark. have to, right? I, I like that you you said respectful. Fearful is the actual. Well, uh, that's yeah. true. Because <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, like, like who's really going to find this? And that's why I was I don't like, think they will. But yeah, I'm I mean, even if they do, right? Are you big enough to go after? I don't think so. What do they do? Just stop? And even if we that found some success? Or something? Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. that they'd probably just say, hey, knock that off. And then we'd, you know, remove that card. Yeah. And get or something. you just change it to that movie about ghosts that are getting in trouble. They're getting busted. Oh, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> or or those cards get pulled and they're just way, way more valuable. Mm-hmm. Like Pokemon yeah, maybe. Cards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or the I don't know if you heard about this, but recently there was a Lewis Hamilton trading card, one of one. Did we talk about this? No, I don't think we did. Okay, so this kid in Canada pulled a one of one autographed Lewis Hamilton trading card mm-hmm. and immediately received a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar cash offer. What? D- said no, thank you. We're going to take it to auction. The guy came back and said, "Here's a check, right?" For they didn't disclose the oh. amount, but somewhere north of a million. Wow. So maybe you that, put a one of one like gold LeBron or something. It'll, it'll be an ungrown ups one. We'll put yeah, it there in. you go. <laughs> Signed by the two original. Yeah, gentlemen literally themselves. one of one yeah. that nobody wants. <laughs> See, in that case, you'd lose money. But in, in another world, maybe yeah. it's worth something. It'll so, happen. You, you know the numbers. How many whip cards are there? Oh, how many goodness. mod cards are there? And how many situation cards? It doesn't seem like it's an even number. No, it's not even. And that, that came from us trying it out and... You, when you play four or five times, you might go, oh, you know, there's not quite enough mods in here. So we, we ended up with uh, just, it's kind of a ratio. I couldn't even tell you the exact numbers. It's been a while. There's the least amount of situations. Right. And then the next most is the vehicles. And then the absolute most is the mods. Makes right. sense. Yeah. Especially because you're holding, the way it's designed, you'll have more mods than you have cars. Right. Just to give you the, the option. That's so usually actually I, how real life is. I just, pulled the, right? <laughs> I just pulled the situation card. Most likely to be used as a Craigslist scam. Ooh. So oh. we pull a 370Z, a Nissan 370Z. That's, actually, that's kind of probably Heading true. off pretty strongly. Yeah. With a bad alignment. That's just a 350Z. Yeah, or 370Z, that's, that's so yeah, what's the, yeah. yeah. It's still <laughs> stance, yo. Still, still, still a scam. Still a <laughs> scam. <laughs> so, did you have to buy a container load of these things? Yes, yeah. Ooh, that's, that, everyone's got minimum order quantities. Sure. Um, like, to, I mean, because I, I get curious about that, too. But, but you yeah. did a Kickstarter launch, right? No, I didn't. And, oh, you and did. in fact, I've almost thought about, like, retroactively Kickstarter launching right. it. Just because just get, get the eyes on it. Yeah, yeah, I think it could be a fun thing to do. Right. Uh, but, man, we just financed it out of pocket. It wasn't too crazy. Mm-hmm. Shipping is what kills you. Right, right, yeah. right. Have you well, rec- especially depending on when. Yes. Right? Yeah, and shipping was, was crazy. Yeah, of course. Have you recouped your, your costs? Are you at least even or close we've, to even? We've done that. Yeah, we're, we're, we're positive. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, we're That's not retiring good. yet. You know, me and George sat down. We said, we want to do this because it's fun. It's kind of labor of love kind yeah. of thing. But if we have a goal, it would be, could this cover like a payment for like an NA1 NSX that we could just split that'd be cool you know what i mean yeah, like that's yeah, a good goal to have for it yeah so we'll i see think if we get there someday well then there's another business idea partial ownership of classics yeah i've seen a few of those there are around. a couple of those not but like jdm cars yet. like the fractional no. ownership thing like yeah a time like it's a timeshare you know i've got an eighth of an nsx i'd be okay with that. i would be so okay. yeah. speaking of nsx as i was driving over here i was behind a honda or honda an acura ilx with the worst license plate frame or license plate that i've ever seen 
The oh, it ILX, can't be worse than what I saw yesterday. The ILX is oh, Jesus. the Acura version of a Honda Civic. Yeah, right? I'm sorry. The license plate said Baby NSX. This is the farthest thing from an NSX. Yeah, that's that awful. This could be. Wow. I uh, I saw one of those digital plates that somebody chose to put a message on. Oh, no. And it says, Go Vols. But Vol- the fact that you have that at all, it's a Vol- college. Oh, because oh. he's in Tennessee. The yeah, is and T- it says Tennessee to OC. Oh, what a TN wow. to OC. Got that, a, bad. that comes up every time you talk to that person. I almost <laughs> didn't get my burrito because of it. Oh. Yeah, I was, really? I was so frustrated. I don't want to be behind this guy. <laughs> Not your Wait. burrito. Yeah. Was it a drive through thing? Yeah, it was Taco Ahoy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah so. I still call it Taqueria de Onda. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel weird with the oi versus hoy, and I was supposed to do an oi. Right. You know, I, I did high school Spanish. I'm pretty, I'm pretty <laughs> I think we all did. Yeah. No, I only did it because I grew up in Orange County. Like that's, Oh, there it is. Yeah, there, exactly. Come I took it. German, technically. <laughs> right? But Spanish is so useful. It is useful, and I do regret. I mean, I, I know enough. I spent a month in South America. Has German been useful? No. What about out. when you're mad? Uh, like, yes. Scheiße. So there is... I, I did date a German girl for a while. Okay. And so, you know, she was always trying to get me to practice German. I was like, I don't really want to. And she's like, how about when you're mad or we're out, you know, and you don't want your friends to know what we're talking about. Suddenly you're fluent. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. yeah. But I, I mean, no, I don't remember it. Mm. So in addition to this card game, mm-hmm. you've got other paper goods. You've got a maintenance log. Yep. And you've got some like uh, autocross or like. Like products that you purvey. Yeah. Yeah. These, these are, I, I made this brand called Sweet Boy. Um, and I, I wanted Hopefully to use it's that. BOI. <laughs> no, it's actually BOI. <laughs> I thought it would age better. Um, you know, I I just like to create. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. largely, it, it always comes from a, a place of need. Right. And it was the kind of thing where I have so many projects, and I've had so many over the years, and I forget what did I do for this car, and when, and what did it cost, and and honestly, I'm. I know it's ungrownups, but we're all grownups, kind of. Yeah, but Wink, you never you know want to I mean? track the cost. Yeah. No, I was going to say well, that's also a cost. bad idea. Okay. Yeah, forget the yeah. cost part, but the grown-up part is that I will only have like an hour a night to work on a project. Right. Maybe. Yeah. So what I what the the design behind that maintenance journal it was beyond just oil changes and all that stuff, which is nice to have in one place. If you do a project where you're taking apart half of the car to remember what order stuff went back in, yeah, yeah. what okay. tools you use. So I. I did I send you guys one of those yet? No, no. I'll, I'll bring a pair over next time because they're useful. They, they kind of help you if you work on something for an hour and you come back, you can pick right back up. Where you I did go. that with the, a lot of the motorcycle stuff I've done. Very mm-hmm. similar, right? I keep a running log of what I've done, when I did it. Yeah. And it's for everything. It doesn't matter what it yeah. was. Just because, especially with the dirt bikes, like you go back to them who knows when yes. and I'm like oh shit what did i do to, <laughs> why do i have all these extra parts mm-hmm. I, i'm yeah. a big fan of pictures especially like during oh, the yeah. disassembly process so i can figure out how to put it back together and also it captures the order so sure. you can kind of go back but the hard part is is keeping all those photos <laughs> i know right yeah. and then you Eight have to dig through them on your phone or whatever yeah. and yeah i'm a, i'm really good at f- taking the picture after or remembering that i need to take the picture you know mm-hmm. like uh, uh, two hours into the project so it never works for me so how many products do you have out in the marketplace now boy um so this project just has four okay the sweet boy yeah which has which is hoopties i have a drift version of the track journal okay and i have a grip version one mm-hmm. again Fair just, just needs you know go to sure. track days and yeah. i can't remember if i was faster than the last time or not what right. changes i made yeah um and then the the maintenance one so that's that's four products for that nice uh-huh and then the uh, a company that i made eons ago big country labs mm-hmm. that i've since sold i don't have it anymore but it's still alive and out there and that's cool i was playing uh you guys ever play car x drift racing they have it on switch on the phone it's a damn good no game. no it's I've, I've heard of it i've never played it now it randomly yeah. got an update and there were bcl wings there. i'm like hey cool i remember designing that nice. you know, an illustrator <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of fun to come across that's cool yeah grayson has just uh discovered a new game and it's only because of the our, our neighbor has xbox game pass and, yeah, the, yeah. and the game is Car Mechanic Simulator 2021. I saw that. And it's, a, it's a new game for Xbox, but clearly 2021 isn't new. But it came out I like mean, a month ago. Yeah. And it's literally a bunch of cars that look very familiar, but with made-up names. Right. And so like one of the cars he was working on looked just like a Mitsubishi Eclipse, but it had just a, a random made-up name. And it's got the whole customer states issue. Like, hey, the, the car makes a vibration every time it's on. It needs an oil change and this and that. And you get to go through the whole car, and you click on different parts, and you can inspect them, remove them, replace them. And the goal is to get the car back to a minimum serviceable uh, quality sure, standard. Sure. And so anything, any part that's got less than 71% life left has to get replaced. And some of the 
issues are just unknown and he has to go through and kind of figure it out. So like someone was like rusty lug nuts yeah. or like a, a bad uh, in high school camshaft or whatever. <laughs> me in prison. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, the, the fact that this is like a video game and it's on Xbox and it's on the sw- it's on um, Steam. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he uh, Grayson doesn't have a game pass, but we ended up just buying the game outright. And he spent a good, what, three hours on it this morning? Four. What Four. do you like most about it? I don't know. Just taking apart the car. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's car obsessed, so I think the fact that he, most of the time when he's playing like Forza Horizon or Forza mm-hmm. Motorsport Same. or The Crew 2 or any of those driving games, it's tweaking the car. Yeah. You know, the, the, the aesthetics, the performance, the modifications and stuff. He's doing a lot of that stuff besides the racing. And then with this... It's that same type of mentality where it's, it's modifying the car or maintaining it, but even to the point where you you can modify your garage. So he that's had to cool. buy it. That's kind of cool. He earned enough credits to buy an OBD2 scanner in the game. <laughs> and <laughs> better tools. And then you can get like a, uh, an engine stand and a hoist, but in order to get the engine stand and a hoist, you need a bigger shop. So he uh, has to expand his garage. See, the, so, only, the only thing you could do, oh, you could make it more realistic, too, and the Snap-on guy comes by and then you're $70,000 <laughs> yeah. in debt. Yeah. You, get, you live but, into the excuses of why you can't yeah. pay him 70 yeah, bucks this week. Exactly. But it's only yeah. Yeah, it's on a weekly basis. Uh-huh. I, had a, I had a Snap-on truck account, but it wasn't Who too didn't? bad. Yeah. yeah. I've but, never had one. Really? I've yeah. always lived through others with that. But oh, I was man. a car audio installer, so it was oh, kind of weird to have the Snap-on guy stop by, but... Luckily, the the I worked at Circuit City, and it was yeah. the one on El Toro Road, right by the uh, the Five Freeway. Yep. And so it was down the street from the uh, Lake Forest or Irvine Auto Center. Right. And so a lot of the uh, the trucks would stop by, and they would stop in our lot, and we'd climb on and buy stuff. So I have like Allen wrenches and, and some screwdrivers and a couple like panel poppers and cotter pin extractors and some of those things. I could always from, tell when the snap on guy was there because all my techs were gone. <laughs> they would yeah. just all disappear at once at like 1030 on a Tuesday. You oh, know? Yeah. Where'd you guys go? Into a nice air conditioned little truck. Spending all the money they didn't have. Yeah. yeah. Back poor. Yeah, oh, we had, yeah, we exactly. We had one kid that worked for me that went and bought like a thirty-five thousand dollar toolbox. I'm oh, like, dude, geez. you are like, you just started. <laughs> you do what are oil you doing? changes. What? what are you doing? Yeah, exactly. Because he wanted it. And they'll finance. But and they're putting cool. any what? Another eighty thousand dollars in tools. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy how much yeah. money gets thrown into those tools, and especially yep. when you're replacing certain ones like the ten mil. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, they sell those in bulk now. Yeah, you go to Harbor yeah. Freight, you can get a, a like I think it's like a six pack of, of ten mil sockets, like twelve point, uh, six point, three eighths, quarter inch, half inch drive. Did they do that to be funny, or is that from a real need? Do you think at Harbor Freight? I think yeah, both. Yes. both. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know they're selling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So do you have a website that people can go purchase your yeah. stuff? Oh, sweetboy.com. O-H. Not Sweet. B-O-I, though. Oh, uh, no. Um. I should buy the domain. Because if not, I feel like you guys are going to have it forwarding. <laughs> no, no, just no. Redirect. <laughs> <laughs> redirect it to who redirect knows what. Sean. So are most of your sales, I'm assuming, just online direct? Or do you actually have retailers that actually have inventory of your stuff? A little bit of both. I haven't gone out to, to seek retailers, but I've had a few come to me. Like people that run track days. I yeah. had someone uh, runs oh, yeah. track days called Wilder Drift, and they right. just did an order. Um, and for me, it's just it's nice to go get them in the hands of people. Right. This doesn't feel like a project to retire on. No, it's but it's but it's like cool. Yeah. And it makes sense when you see it. You're like, oh, that's that's smart. You know, you can log all of your details. So your your camber, your air pressure, whatever it did. Whatever you had done for that particular setup that week, mm-hmm. you've got it all down, so you can refer to it again. You can do a motorcycle version for the Moto Track guys. I, I get a lot of people asking yeah. about that. It's but it's one of those things I don't know anything about it. Yeah. Like I, I would feel weird making it if I've, I don't have the experience. I mean, I feel like if Ryan you does. if you worked with somebody that did, it'd be you yeah, know be doing it would make sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've seen a motorcycle or two. You would need <laughs> half, as, half as many pages for half as many wheels. Yeah, I mean, you're yeah. not doing the casters and the cambers. That's yeah, true. So yeah. you know there are. I mean, but like suspension settings, things mm-hmm. like that, that's always interesting to track. Yeah. And Drag guys ask about it a lot too. Yeah. yeah. Not, yeah. not the Queens, but the. The aqua blue eyeshadow. Yeah. That's, no, no. that's a different journal that they're yes. working with. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Where there's a need. Yes. Yeah. That's where they're here to fill it. So that's fine though. You mentioned InDesign because I, man, I've spent a lot of time in InDesign. It's, bad, it's a dark place. Isn't it's it? so bad. You don't want to be in. No, there. and then you're there, and you you think you're doing good things, and <laughs> you're not. No, no. I think it's that's terrible. the same with any Adobe product, no matter what you're messing with. Because I deal with Illustrator and I yeah. deal with with uh, Photoshop quite a bit, mm-hmm. and it's just you get in there, and it's just like. Uh, have you used the AI tool in Photoshop yet? I have not, but I've seen enough videos online where they're just using the AI predictive fill right. to create like. 
the 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 meme that I've seen is you're taking album covers, uh-huh. and then you stick the the square album cover into a large rectangle and use it to fill the rest. Oh, of sure. The rectangle. So it's like a full picture, that right? Yeah. That's and some of the effects have been pretty pretty interesting. Somebody did that with Star Wars. They made the frames tall, mm. right? So they took like different. I don't know. Yeah. Like the ad at walking across Hoth, and then they yeah. made it a tall frame, which was actually pretty cool. in yeah, some of them it came out decent. Yeah, it. and then some of them you're like, oh yeah, that's bad. That's like that's really fake. You can tell. AI. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like cool. shitty AI a lot. I like. I think it's creepy that AI can't figure out hands and mouths very yeah, well. I love there, that. Somebody shared a video where I guess they used text to AI to create a video. Right. And they were trying to create like a Blue Jays fan celebration eating hot dogs kind of video. Okay. And in the video, <laughs> as you do, yeah, the, <laughs> normal. The the <laughs> human people, the the kids, the adults were partially hot dogs and they were eating each other and they oh what it oh, was horrifying. disturbing but it was kind of rad because <laughs> the first like third of the video like oh it's pretty normal and it gets a little glitchy and you go okay that's not that doesn't look right sure then it and jumps it off evolves. the cliff and you're like oh holy hell this is creepy wow but you watch it and you're right like, all right wow yeah it's the kind of creepy you can't look away from yeah yeah we could see what kind of AI hoopties cards could be created. That would be pretty interesting, yeah. actually. I'd like to see what those are. What kind of scenarios it comes up with. Yeah, just pull stuff and t- predict predictive AI or text to AI, text to image, whatever the hell they call it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not good at the internet. You could do like expansion packs with certain like vehicle segments. So mm-hmm. you could do like uh, EV centric stuff. Oh, there you go. Or yeah. like we've talked about some of those. Yeah. It would be fun to do. I mean Cards Against Humanity has what, how many? 30, 40, 50 yeah. different, right? Expansion yeah. packs, yeah. yeah. And they're constantly coming out with ones. There was um oh what did I see recently? Somebody had made their own sort of cards against humanity with like pets. Hmm. So I mean you can do whatever you want really. Yeah. Colin's actually he's quite fun. the uh the creative fellow. I, I he's a fun <laughs> follow on Instagram but He's been doing these, I guess, Facebook Marketplace, is it for sale critiques? Oh, yeah. So he takes the the images from something that's for sale, and then he kind of just rates the... The The item? Or the the the, ad? The post itself. Okay. The post itself, like the absurdity of it, like the asking price or the modifications. And it's... uh, It's shit talking, but it's fun. Yeah. (laughs) I like to try and keep it wholesome if I'm going to talk shit. (laughs) (laughs) He'll talk... I can't help myself. (laughs) Yes, that's a good way to put it. Talking poo. How did uh, how did that come about? Was this again one of those things where you're just looking at the absurdity of it and you're just like, all right, somebody's got to call this out. This came from uh, this was a source of frustration because we're in this really weird place right now with buying and selling cars online. Oh yeah, where there's just there's these markers out in the middle of nowhere where somebody's like, well, hey, this Chevy Malibu 2004 sold on Bring a Trailer Bring a Trailer for 90 grand because it has one mile, right? And it's this undesirable car, but it's sold for a bunch of money. So now everyone with the you know, salvage title Malibu with Wants three to flat get that tires there. and yeah. steelies. They're like, well, if that one's 90, mine must be worth 65. Right. That drives me crazy. Well, I've seen a lot. The, have you seen all the Fieros people want a bunch of money for? Oh, I'm like, yes. come on, man. Yeah, exactly. But it's the same Fieros thing. It's like one sold because it had six miles on it yes. and it was parked in some guy's garage who died 10 days later or something mm-hmm. stupid like that. Always. And it's a freaking Fiero, dude. Yes. Calm down. But it's practically a Ferrari or a Lamborghini if you do if you play your cards right. I mean, <laughs> fair. Swap a couple badges. Who yeah, knows? swap a couple badges and it's some <laughs> Some, some really Bulgari. shitty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I just have this thing that where I'm bothered when people don't do the research before sure. selling a car, and then they ask an unreasonable price, and then they get mad. Right. Because there's this thing, and because I, I pay close attention on the A86 Corolla side, yeah. but also Land Cruisers. You know, I've been through a handful of those, and uh, there's when people get so mad at each other about it, and it's it's a really easy situation to figure out. Is if you put a car on the market mm-hmm. and nobody's asking to buy it, you priced it too high. Yeah, you know, three months have gone by, nobody's asked to see it. You're right. way over. Yeah, yeah. But somehow we all get really fired but up. But does about that it. even happen these days? Because I figure no matter what, even if the price is absurd, you still get that crazy lowball offer. Dude, I got something. We uh, a coffee table selling a uh, like a coffee table. Right. And for it's a three hundred and fifty dollar coffee table. I think we've put it up for like one hundred fifty bucks. Some guy goes, Reasonable. "How about for free and you deliver." Yeah, that. Well, that part. so people people will. <laughs> I was thinking you were going to say like twenty five. No, the guy said free and you deliver. Free and you deliver. That's like a negative. You're out money at that yeah, point. Yeah, it's a good thing I'm not running the listing because I would tell the dude where to put it. Yeah. He also lived yeah. in like a different state or something. Probably. We didn't get that <laughs> far. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, 
it's both sides, right? Yeah. So you have people that are asking crazy crap, but mm-hmm. then you're having people offering crazy crap. I've, and I feel like since the pandemic, it's the ga- the gap has widened. I've it's only chaos. had experience selling stuff on Craigslist. I've, I haven't tried Facebook Marketplace don't. buying or do, selling. Don't. Just don't. Yeah, yeah just hold I on to it. See, yeah. it's a look. It's not fun to sell or buy. Well, and the funny thing is, is people go, oh, well, it's better because you know the person because you see their profile or, what, or whatever. But I mean, so many of these profiles are fake. Well, and you look at a lot of them, and they're, they it tells you what that person is selling, or yes. right? <laughs> and it's just like, oh, you're just a reseller. Like, yeah. You're going to yeah. blowball me to get whatever it is. So what I, I did tell one guy I'd sooner set it on fire. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, and that didn't go well, as you can imagine. <laughs> I, I hope you sent him a picture holding a lighter. Yeah, right. lighter <laughs> and then he comes back with a sob story. I was kid burned in a fire or something. Okay, or well, bummer, man. Made up. Yeah, it's always like you know, my kids. It's my kid's birthday. They've got cancer. You, you ruined know. my kid's birthday because yeah. you wouldn't give me a coffee Xbox. table. <laughs> get out of here. What the hell? I don't know. I don't get it. Have you bought or sold anything on on Facebook Marketplace? Oh, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, it's yeah. bad. It sucks, but it's sort of the necessary evil. Like, let's say you're gonna go buy something. Like, my right. dream car would be a Mark IV Supra. Okay, okay. you know what I mean. Every, yeah. Everyone would, would be like, I want to hear the turbo noises. It's great, yeah. and. I want to know the market at least. Am I yeah, buying one sure. right now? No. But right. This is what we do. I mean, yeah. I look up GT threes too. I'm not buying. Yeah, yeah. Things. I look at stuff all the time. But you have like Facebook is the probably the closest tell to market values because bring a trailer is usually like 20, 30 percent above bring market. Trailers usually, it's its own thing. Yeah. You know, and the cars are usually exceptional. Right. So if you're gonna find out what something costs, I just look and I go, okay, this one's been on the market for a week and now it's gone. Yep. But you don't know what it's sold for. Right. So yeah. Or if it even sold. Exactly. Right. And and the reason why for that little Instagram series I said is this still available is because you put something up for sale, and that I think it's a UX problem on the Facebook app. It's so easy to accidentally hit, hit that button. button. Yeah, it yeah. says, "Is this still available?" Right. And everyone gets so mad when they get that, yeah. you know, that message. What's so. interesting too, like how how many scams and stuff. Were, yeah, Grayson's getting oh, you're getting scam now. Yeah, he's uh, got a U, but USPS even on, package heading towards him. Even on the Facebook Marketplace, like you'll get, you know, you post something and it's boom, somebody's is this available. And then you'll respond, and they nothing. Never yeah. anything back. Or you'll get like, oh, can I send my son with a cashier's check to pick it up from Nigeria? You cannot. I mean, you can, yeah, sure, yeah, I guess. Can can Nigerian prince is back. Yeah. You know, what if he's real and he just can't give his money away? Grayson would be like, all right, yeah. whatever. Yeah. That'd suck. Let's give it a shot. But it is. It's, it's preposterous. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've I've reached out to a couple of sellers before because for a short time we were looking at getting a a Porsche Boxster. Yeah. And so a couple of them had been up for like two weeks. And so the, at that point, you're like, okay, it's been up for a while. Do you still have this? And yeah, yeah. it's the same thing. It's, it's crickets. And you're like, well, if you really wanted to sell it, wouldn't you respond? And then you're just like, all right, whatever. Yeah, it's people. Did you see the guy? What? I can't think of his name. It's like Lou, Lou Batar or something anyways. But the dude that took uh, internet arguments and turned them into songs. Oh, yeah. And yes. one of them is like, is this available? Don't bother me. Like, yeah, that's that's that, oh, it's pretty yeah. hilarious. Yeah, Lubalin, I think the guy's Yeah, Lubalin or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on the Instagram if you're interested. Yeah, that that's true when it comes to like buying and selling anything like automotive on the internet it's always weird auto stuff is even worse yeah yeah because oh uh, no low balls i know what i got yeah well oh. I, even selling like so i sold <laughs> does that uh, one set you off right it away does, it does. i said i sold a pair of ramps aluminum folding ramps for mm-hmm. motorcycles yeah. there are two of them That's if you pair, buy yes. one right one uh, uh i think they're 130 bucks a piece i sold both of them for like 150. okay it's so a pretty two good for deal. one basically yeah, yeah essentially yeah. and i got so many people like this is ridiculous this is a stupid problem. i'm like bro they've been used three times they're basically brand new yeah. you're getting one for free and yeah. what do they sell for they I have 150 bucks because i stood on it and they're wrong right and right. i was like look dude f off and then finally i get this one guy that was like hey look i'm gonna send my buddy to pick him up i can't get him i'm like this sounds this sounds like a scam, but whatever. I'll meet him. Yeah. He showed up at the apartment, had 150 bucks in cash. Perfect. Said hi to the dog and left. That's great. It you was know, perfect. If, if there's one thing we could have, it would be the actual sold price of everything. Right. That After would the be fact, the most killer. Because I, I think I sellers do. are embarrassed to admit what they take sometimes. Well, it's also, though, like, go on eBay, right? I, I love people like, oh, oh it's selling for this on eBay. I'm like, but did it sell? That's just what they're And at least box. with eBay, you can check, yeah. right? Yes. And so you can see what stuff sold for. Like, I had... I had something that somebody told me, oh, that's got to be worth a few hundred bucks. I'm like, okay. So I went and I looked and it's, yeah, they're asking that, but a lot of them are selling for $25. Yeah. Right. Right. So I was like, oh, screw it. I took it to Salvation Army. Mm-hmm. There's some stuff's not worth it. It's just not. I agree. So when I, when I pulled up, 
I was expecting to see like an A86 girl out front. <laughs> so apparently all of Colin's toys are broken. All of them are broken. Isn't that but, how it always works? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. One of them was in an accident, so that's not your fault. Yeah, I got right. rear-ended when I was in the, the West Valley. And then one of them is getting a new interior, so that's just getting redone. That's right. fine. Yep. But then the two Corollas are well because I, of your own handiwork? You know what? Well, I don't know. I might. I'm not <laughs> a religious man, not a but I might nice blame thing. God for this one. <laughs> it really it, well, was it at my hands? Yes. So one of the cars is more of a long-term restoration. Sure. There's a car I was trying to buy for 20 years from my best friend's aunt, original owner of a Jeep. Oh, so oh, you've rat. known this car and you've seen it for 20 years. I was Well, I'll, I'll tell you. There's okay. a little bit of a story. But the, the one that I broke is the one that usually works. So I thought, oh, you know, I'm going to be such a good car owner. I'm going to chase down these check engine lights, get rid of them. They've been on for like years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's from 1985. You know, give me a yeah. yeah. So I killed one of them. It was for the throttle position sensor. I go on to the next one, which was for the uh, water temp sensor that runs to the ECU. Sure. And so I figure it's a break in the wiring, but I'm like, yeah, I'll change the sensor. You know, this is a 10 minute job. Yeah. So I pull out the sensor, got a brand new one. I put it in there and I'm doing the, the soft one hand tighten. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. It's still on, on the ratchet. Yeah. And when it gets about three quarters of the way threaded in, the the water pipe itself attached to the motor just separates Ooh. it's from itself. Ooh. And I pull off the sensor and it's still half threaded in. <laughs> <laughs> the pipe is, I got half the pipe in my hand and half on the car. So uh, that car's down because searching for that part's been been you know a little. Can bit you overrated. sweat a new piece back together? Maybe have something welded together? Or? Yeah, yeah, it could weld. I think yeah. what I'll do is I'll try and find a complete one, right. which I actually did today. Oh, okay. I walked over to someone's house from my house oh, to nice. get it, oh, which is nice. fun. Yeah, it's nice yeah. to have A eighty sixes around. Uh, I got that. And then um, I'll get the other one welded because you can never have enough backups. Yeah. Especially when it gets to the cars start to get older. Yes. Having enough parts. Yeah. yeah. And they don't remake stuff. So what like started the love thing. for you for the Corolla? I got kind of lucky with Google back in the day. Um, I, I've always been car obsessed. I wish that I had a mechanic game I could play with. <laughs> yeah, you, you can come over and play. <laughs> I just might. Yeah. Um, I, I've always been obsessed with cars. And when I was, I don't know, 17 or so. I was just searching online. I thought, well, you know, what's a good car to go to the racetrack with? Yeah. You know, just to learn. Yeah. And everyone's like, well, you want it to be rear wheel drive. Da, da, da. And so I looked, what's a cheap rear wheel drive car? And, and at the time, they the were cheap. Sixes were. Yeah. yeah. My, my first than one Miata? was 500 bucks. Oh, yeah. They were super cheap. Yeah. Oh, yeah we used yeah, to go we, similar. We'd put cheap. like five, 600 bucks in our pocket and drive around Santa Ana and find yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. It was great. And that's, I bought one from a strawberry field in Santa Ana. Oh, nice. Yeah. I followed a lady home. <laughs> that's creepy. <laughs> well, that's, that's fun. It, I mean, you know, it wasn't like, you shouldn't have killed hour, her. But, no, yeah, right. uh, that part it was creepy, but yeah, buying the car was no. It, but I mean, I just asked her, "Hey, if you want to sell it, I've got cash right now." And yeah. she's like, oh, "Okay, yeah, yeah." Right there on the spot, yeah. like, yeah. You would think she'd be like, "Oh, I got to figure out if I got another car. I got to figure out some logistics." She's like, "All right, whatever." Nope. So yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's go. There's no title. You can have it. It's not hers. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I've had that happen too, actually. That's fun. I'll tell you that story. That's a good time. So, anyways, yeah. you're, you're digging around, finding. So, uh, so I found that you know this was a cheapish rear wheel drive yeah. car. Miatas were on the list too. It sure. just didn't really do it for me as yeah. much. Um, and you know, I, I worked at a movie theater shoveling popcorn and ended up. I was literally driving around. Yeah. And I found one up in the hills of Villa Park that someone was using to store cement bags. Oh, so they get wet <laughs> okay. That's a good use. Yeah. And it was yeah. a GTS and everything. And All a right. hatch. Yeah. And um, I knocked on his door for a little more than a year before he called me back. Yeah. And then I, I paid 500 bucks for it, put a battery in it, and drove it home. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 So so the obsession started there because it, it's, it's a special kind of car. A lot of cars have community around them. Right. But this is, uh, I think, an extra special kind of kind of people get into these. Yeah. Well, I think so it's like the, the me. for me, it, it's, it's always this, the initial D. Right manga kind of crossover thing with the a86 at least in terms of like the awareness and stuff because i i don't know of many people that own them other than you yeah <laughs> you know it, it's it's kind of interesting because i mean like when i was in high school and stuff like the car to get was either like the the civic hatchback yeah you know but i mean these weren't re- rear wheel drive yeah clearly, sure but i mean still was the car to get the yeah the civic hatchback or civic coupe integra you know, those those were the, the cars you wanted to get if you wanted to play with it. And so, like, my buddy Frank, growing up, he had a Nissan Sentra. Not on the cool car spectrum at all, but... Not we, even we, an SER? No. Oh, just no, a, this was an 88 Sentra, so this is pre-SER. Oh, so Pre-SR, pre, pre yeah. NA. Yeah, this is, like, it had right angles on the body. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we he did the, uh, what was it, the one-day paint and body mm-hmm. yeah. paint job on there, and he yeah. got some rims, got a, a, a Magnaflow exhost. When Magnaflow was first... Ooh. Kind of coming into the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. What size was his sub? 
Was it ten or twelve? Oh, we had uh, we started with one twelve. We bought off the penny saver. <laughs> and, and the penny like, saver. Guys. Oh man! And then so I had a, a full wood shop in the garage. So he, we bought. So we didn't. He didn't have his license at his time at that time, and neither did I. But it was his brother's car, and he knew he was getting it mm-hmm. um, as a hand me down. And in the penny saver, he, he saw a Rockford Fosgate Punch twelve inch sub in a seventh order bandpass box and we don't we don't want the hell of seventh order bandpass boxes well i don't i, I still, still don't, don't know what that. Yeah. Yeah, what is, that? is that a, a religious thing you're saying words yeah well i my car audio i mean since that i learned but basically it's you don't see the speaker yeah the 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 subwoofer is in an enclosure and it's firing into another enclosure but the sound comes out of a port so you don't oh, yeah, see okay. anything yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. but you can you know touch the terminals to a nine volt battery you hear the the pop so you know the speaker's good yeah we bought it for, I think it was like 50 or 75 bucks. And then so we take it home and my mom took us in, in her, we had a, a Dodge full-size conversion van. Uh-huh. Oh, so cool. she ran us over to pick it up. We put it in the back of the van, we take it home, we take it to Frank's house, we go to put it in the trunk and it doesn't fit. Of course. Because the box is too big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we figure out how to take apart this ho- you know homemade, je- you know, just really just ghetto fabricated yeah. enclosure. And then I had the wood shop, so I, I cut the box entirely down to make it narrow enough rebuilt it and slid it into the trunk mm. and that kind of started the car audio game for me as a hobby right but by the time frank was done with that car we, i think we had two 12s in that thing and like you know <laughs> this was back before when you really didn't want the trunk to rattle yeah and it rattled yeah, everything that license rattled. plate frame was hurting yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah we tried all you know the dynamat the, the foam tape and all these things to do but that was a classic rattle trap but that was so much fun just learning and for me the, the pressure was off because it wasn't my car yeah right. that's true too. right so yeah. i was just like all right let's do this gonna be embarrassed it's him i only ever yeah. did a stereo in one car mm-hmm. and you couldn't even hear it anyways because the car mean? was so loud oh because it was a i had you know headers to six inch glass packs to dumps as you should what car was it, it was a 67 mustang oh and so uh, that was my first car Ooh. yeah it was uh that for me i was always like more obsessed with muscle cars until i got out yeah. of high school yeah and then it started to go towards imports yeah. and yeah I never a lot really of subarus had, i never really had a big muscle car thing like i i liked them i yeah. thought they were cool but i never wanted to own one i think i think partly was probably influenced by my dad yeah right because he was super into muscle cars uh-huh. and he grew up in that era yeah, right where course, that was cool yeah. he was more in the cruiser side and i liked the big power oh, yeah. lifted ass yeah. it was great did your parents have anything cool when you were a kid you know my, i my dad had a lot of different cool cars over the years he had but weird he likes yeah. weird cars sure he had like so i had my favorite from when i was growing up he had a typhoon oh okay typhoon. that's pretty cool All that's, that's right. cool yeah. that's way the, cool the best part of it grayson you'll probably appreciate this you know riding in the back seat it had these they were <laughs> kind of like fanny packs that sat on the side they're vertical fanny packs okay and you could just put a lot of Hot Wheels in there. Oh, so <laughs> um, he also had a, a Camaro SS. Uh, All right. like the what year was that? 97-ish. Just before the cat catfish thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Same, same chassis. Um, he had an Isuzu Via Cross. Oh, wow. Okay. That, that is cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those cool. are super Inter- cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's on big tires. Yeah, yeah they're, they're awesome. like toys. Yeah, yeah. They're my, ridiculous. My coworker has a Via Cross. That's actually pretty clean. Oh, really? that's rad. Yeah, when you see them, it's such a unexpected sighting it's mm. just it looks alien i saw one like two years after they stopped making them with the original window sticker because it still hadn't been sold on a dealer <laughs> lot and it was a trip it was like i almost kind of want to go buy that yeah but I, I couldn't do it yeah they are cool though it's cool yeah, it's yeah, yeah. very single purpose yes yeah. two doors barely four seats right yeah yeah, sure. yeah that was neat and the yeah. styling was just so out of this world right mm-hmm. you know it, it's one of those things where there's certain cars that still feel kind of futuristic no matter when you look at it. I mean, even if they're yeah, That's one of them for that sure. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. one of them. Like the other one I think is like the, the FDRX7. Yeah. Like everything you see, oh. it looks contemporary even though yeah. it, mm-hmm. it's 25 years old. That's a good looking car. Mm-hmm. I want, I was obsessed. I wanted one so bad. I wanted a green FD. Ooh. And my dad was like, I'll get you one when we get, you get out of high school or something. Yeah, it yeah. never happened. Yeah. Yeah, Grayson's right. been dropping hints for an RX-7 as his first car. I want better for you. Yeah. That, was the worst, <laughs> that was the worst car I've ever owned. Absolutely you, what year was yours? 94. Okay. Yeah, it was a, 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 I traded a Corolla for it. Oh, wow. My green Levin Coupe with a blacktop 20 valve. I traded oh, wow. straight across for this FD. Big turbo. Did it catch on fire? Uh, it didn't catch on oh, fire. Oh, you got lucky. But it's, well, I don't know. Like, it's got to it's gotta not... It's got to run to be on fire. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Most of the time. <laughs> it was like, it came to me, I drove it, it blew up. Yeah. It's rebuilt engine, 
blew up. And then I sold it uh, to George for a song, my, my buddy who yeah. I hoopties with. And he's like, you know, he's he does shit right. I like to kind of just get it going because I want to go and enjoy the Sure. Car. Right. I'm really, I'm trying to get older and learn how to appreciate doing things right. Which is like one of my projects is for that. The other one, let's get this shit done. Right. Um, so he does his stuff right. And he's like, okay, I'm going to take it to this this really well-known engine builder. He's going to do it right. And he's also the guy that's going to do the, the dyno on it and do the tune. And it, and it blew up like 1,400 miles later. Oh, <laughs> After and then doing he, it all right. And he was like, you know what, though? I love this car. It's beautiful. You know, he, it, was, it was red. Uh, he put CE28s on it. Oh, nice. It was, just looked fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And then Ella swapped it. Well, it, honestly, I get it now. Because, like, I think they do, they should have a rotary in them. Like, I think rotaries are cool. Yeah. But then he went to Mazda and he bought the last Crate 13B. Brand oh, new, wow. fresh okay. from Mazda. What could be safer than that, right? Yeah, everything. Well, apparently, turns out yeah. <laughs> it also blew up, and he, he used a different tuner that time. This oh, was like, well, this is the guy, you know? right? And it's just like I think sometimes those cars just don't like you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. some owners they like. I know some guys that used to because I used to. Yeah, they swear on them. Like, oh, it's yeah. bulletproof, and you're like, how? I remember seeing it, and, and like, yeah. and back when I did, um, did I tell you guys I used to do a lot of drifting? No, but I, I was a, now you did. I, is I did Formula D. Oh, okay. Oh, no way. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's that makes sense because when you posted that Instagram thing early in the week, we were talking about uh, we have a friend in common, uh, Bill. <laughs> oh, Bill. Yes. Okay. I want to hear a Bill story that you got. That's the. Yeah. <laughs> if you did Formula Diamond, we might have friends in common. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, it, it was one of the things where it's, it's kind of funny how small the automotive uh-huh. enthusiast mm-hmm. community yeah. is. Just an automotive community, period. Yeah. yeah. It's kind yeah. Of like nice. like I, I finally met your buddy Tom, Cartboy, yesterday yeah, yeah. at the HRE open house. Yeah. And now we're just like texting each other all the time because he's dope. He's a really cool dude. Yeah. Hey, I've known Tom for 20 Jesus, almost 25 years, yeah. probably. Mm. And so, he's just been a solid... He's one of my best friends. That's so nice. Grace and I went down to... And we never see each other. <laughs> it's, like, it's one of those things, but yeah. we talk every day. And when you see each other after a long time, no time has passed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I like yeah. that. So we were down in Vista, California at HRE Wheels Open House, and they do it like an annual event. Yeah. So we went down there. I totally forgot it. And then you sent, you sent me a picture of Tom with Matt Farah from The Smoking Tire. Right. And he's like, look for my friend, not Matt. I'm like... Okay, <laughs> and he's a, he's got a, a blue GT4. Yeah, and I was like nine eleven shark. Blue. Well, and it's a GT4, so right. it could only be a G- GT4 is only came in, right? That's yeah, right. I think I, so. Brain fart. Yeah, that's or all right. it could be a Celica Alltrack. Because that's fair. Because yeah, it's yeah. GT2, yeah, it's not GT3, no, and so anyways, I, I see the car and it's in a in a detailing booth or whatever. Yeah, he what, whoever did his uh, uh, wrap. No, it was a paper PPF. Uh, yeah, yeah, that stuff. The PPF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was like finish line or something like that. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I see the car. I'm like, all right, sweet. And he's got a little cart boy sticker in the rear quarter window. I'm like, all right, there's the car. And, and it's looking- annoying license plate. Yes, which is hilarious. What does yeah. it say baby NSF? It says O V R M S R P. <laughs> yeah, it fits. It that's, totally that's on par with Tesla license plates. Yeah, but no, wait, if, you know, worse. if you know Tom, though, it makes total sense. Like, he's he's making fun of himself, and okay. he's happy about well, it. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, find the car, and then I'm looking for Tom, and then all I have to go by is the picture you sent me. So, right. I'm looking for a guy wearing a dark gray hoodie, wearing a baseball cap, sunglasses, and then, like, a gray... Basically everybody there. Yes! <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm like, shit! And, so, <laughs> and I'm dragging Grayson around looking yeah. for... And Grayson's like, can we just go? Right. Because we'd already seen everything at the show. It's it's a... It's not very big, right? It's, it's it? decent size, okay. but once you've seen everything, you've seen sure, it. Sure, you don't sure. need There's like a hundred cars, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. But a hundred and a lot, and then maybe about another 20 or so up front, and wow. then some inside. Hmm. Some are cools, some aren't. But once you've seen the show, you've you've got it. Yeah, yeah. You're not missing anything, right? And so we, uh, you know, I was texting you, and then uh, Tom comes walking with the son, and he had enough, and he was getting ready to go out. So in that quick time we had to meet, we um, took selfies with our middle fingers extended to send to Ryan mm-hmm. simultaneously. Mm-hmm. Um, That's as- Miles' first uh, first middle finger, apparently. Was it really? Yeah. Oh wow. I've, that's <laughs> apparently, nice. that's what I get. Get all the kids first. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, uh, yeah. It's and broke. then, as requested, I did call Tom a cunt. Good. So as you should. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> just, what he's six call seriously him? such a good dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, anybody that picks a GT4, that's yeah. a good dude. That's a guy that gets it. And he, the, it's great. so he had an Audi um, e-tron. Okay. And. He's had a billion cars, but he had, in fact, he had a really sweet white E30 M3 that Ooh. I wish he'd never got rid of. But oh. that, the e-tron was my fault. They're like, hey, man, have you seen the e-tron? It's like, well, I kind of need a new car for commuting, whatever. <laughs> so 
he ended up, I drove it before he did. Right. I went down to pick him up or to help him pick. It was awesome. Really? Oh, yeah. That's the cool. It's massaging seats. But he got rid of oh, If you have yeah. massaging sheets in a car, it was a lease. Oh, okay. I'm not mad driving yeah. down the freeway with that kind of torque, mm-hmm. right? I mean, it's an EV, so they're, I, they're fine. When I was and it's an Audi. When I was chatting with him, I was like, oh, is the GT4 your commuter? He's like, oh, hell no. No, that he, thing's he, He's got a TRX, I think? Yeah. No, no, no. no, no. Just a big a Ram. Dodge Ram with like literal leather buckles on the seats i mean it's a he got some weird Dominic package and then i was like yeah you're not driving a subaru and he's like no this is the first time i don't have a subaru yeah, he hasn't had one in a while does it's he weird. seem lighter like in his soul no i will so he owns a company carboy that makes specific they make subaru products oh, so okay. they make short shifters and uh, like all kinds uh-huh. of um stuff and links and cbts and no no, no head no. gaskets no and <laughs> well, he should vape oils and no but yeah, right <laughs> monster d no and that's like, i mean that's how i know him is because i was a distributor for him and oh, he okay. was spon- he sponsored all of our cars Very cool. and then that's kind of how we started becoming friends but he's so he's not had a subaru to do r&d work because he hasn't needed one uh, yeah. right because they're all pretty much the, the same, same. Yeah, at now and the new camry looking thing is is what it is yeah. but no so i we were talking i was like he had started kind of looking at the gt4s and thinking about it and i was like just just order one yeah. just do it he's like no my wife will kill me i'm just do it yeah. and so finally okay, we talked to him and he's like okay fine yeah and yeah and i was like i'm living vicariously through you with right now is he gonna make parts for those now he wa- I think he probably will end up yeah, doing it stuff. It feels like that's the move. When yeah. you guys make the jump from import to the fancy German stuff, right. then it's like to the moon. There is uh, that car is so beautiful. That's so cool. So he got the you carbon know, buckets. Logs in German. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, he's gonna translate it for me. Yeah, right. But he's got the carbon <laughs> buckets. He got like oh. the he got the ceramic brakes. What's the name, man? The blue tartan interior. Yeah, he did. It's crazy. So that's a aftermarket deal. Yeah, they they drop in. But yeah, but the company that makes those inserts, they're like. They're not cheap either. Oh, no. I can't imagine. But I think it's that's why I don't think I could pull off Porsche ownership. I'm too cheap. I myself. want one so bad. Me too. I I've want always so wanted bad. one as a, since I was a kid. Me too. But I just don't, like, I'm thinking I'm too cheap. I don't know. I think it would hurt me too much or something. Yeah. You know? I also have a friend that just picked up a, I think it's in 2017, mm-hmm. 911 that's a silver mm-hmm. with a cocoa interior. Ooh. It is beautiful. I like brown and tan. Interiors. Oh, yeah. It is. But it's not like, it, I mean, it Coco's is Coco. Coco's the dark one, right? It's like a middle, mm-hmm. like a middle ground, right? But right. it is, oh my God, is it gorgeous. Mm. Everything. And you just put the new, they have those upgraded head units now. Yeah, do CarPlay. Yeah, so it's yeah. got CarPlay oh. and everything. And that's is, through Porsche. Is his yeah. a 991 or 997? That's like right up I around that. I think it's a 991 Mark one or... 991.1 yeah something like that yeah my buddy carl just picked up a 997.2 and he was very oh, no, so it may it might be a 97 you were talking to drew yeah so i don't remember did did you figure out it was a is it big oh, or I little it's he, his is a turbo s so it's well, it's this it's one's just boy. an na yeah i don't yeah. know but he picked his up specifically my buddy carl picked that one up specifically because it, it was the first with the the uh, pdk with the pdk okay so drew's is the so, one right before so PD, pdk would be 991 yeah right so he wanted pdk I think so. I, they're so confusing but then he also yeah. wanted uh manual power st- or manual hydraulic power steering oh god non-electronic yeah, so yeah. that was the the magic combo that that he that he picked up interesting so i don't know would you guys go if you were buying a new 911 would you go PDK or just six speed? Yeah, newer. Uh, I think for the wife acceptance factor, it would be PDK. I would get would... a PDK just because they're. Oh, I I well, I really love driving manuals. Yeah, I would want to drive this car and yeah. use it every day, and they just seem a little more usable, yeah. and they're quicker on the track. I drove, so I drove a manual back to back with a PDK mm-hmm. at PC actually, mm-hmm. and, uh, the and the PDK, PDK is just Porsche, uh, the Porsche Experience, Experience Center. Center. Yeah, yeah, or uh, Pecla. Yeah. Um. But I, the PDK was just that much quicker, yeah. and I have a, a big appreciation for sequential transmissions. Yeah, it's really cool. It's it's rad. It's really cool. Have yeah. you had a chance to play with somebody else's Porsche? Uh, nothing modern. Okay. No. And and I'm curious because I I always like to think you know we always think about the shit we're not actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think at some point maybe you know I'll jump on it, but I'm curious about dri- driving experience in 997 versus in 991. Yeah, because you're looking at him, you're like, well, one's a lot bigger. The other one probably feels a little bit more soulful, you know, because a little bit older. But those those PDKs, big comfy seats and stuff, I don't know, it's kind of nice. It's not yeah. going to be unsporty. It's a freaking no. 911, you know. I saw a GT3 touring the other day. 
Oh. The person driving it was about 75 years old, and she was so close to the steering wheel <laughs> and couldn't see barely over the dash. Well, so it just seems like a use of that car. Yeah. I feel like she should just let me have it. That's a good idea. As I think she should let you have it, too. Right. Yeah. As her favorite grandson that she didn't know I don't know, know who the had. lady is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Grandma, it's me. <laughs> Ryan. Well, I'm old enough, she might believe yeah. me. Right. <laughs> I just, it is a shame when some of these just insanely cool cars. Yeah. And it's not to say that being old is bad. But it's not getting used right. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, that's all C8s for the most part. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, like, it's like I thought. All Corvettes it looks, in general. Then that's yeah. what it is. It's like, you know, C6, C7 is all, especially here in Orange County, a lot of old ladies drive those. That's Even true. some Mustangs. And some, yeah. And, yeah, I, yeah. and I think they're, don't get me wrong, I think Corvettes are cool. But I thought when the C8 came out, because it looks kind of Lamborghini, it's going to be a bunch of cool guys with sunglasses no. driving them, and they had toothpicks and shit like that. <laughs> And and gold really chains, cool. and gold chains. But then I just look and oh, there's Barbara. You know? Yeah, the, the new Corvette is so hit and miss for me. Like in some certain angles, in certain colors, all right, not a bad looking car. Other, either it's a two tone or it's the accent color. Something's off, and it just seems like a, a knockoff Italian car. Yeah, and it just doesn't work. And I, well, or it also they. For whatever reason, so I, I saw a white one where all of the bl- what would normally be black was mm-hmm. all white. What yeah. Do you think? It was horrible. Yeah, because the white tires. No, but like all of the all the vents and stuff were white, and it yeah. looked like they had rattle canned it, Ew. but it was oh. factory. Yeah, like that's how it came. Oh, it was just bad. And white interior, because I I don't know what the like interior color messy. was. I couldn't see the inside. We were just yeah. driving. But, but that it, one, yeah, that's the that's the cocaine interior. Apparently, yeah, that's that's the old like Countach color scheme. I do like. I mean, their I version saw the of cops that. don't find the cocaine in the seat. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> their version of like the, the shark blue is not bad. I saw a tennis ball yellow Z06. So uh, there, that was kind of cool. That's kind of cool. There is that that Miami shark blue kind yeah, of yeah. vet in our neighborhood or somewhere in the in the community, but they've got yellow stripes. What? Uh, yeah, and so why? me? I don't know, but it looks factory, so I don't know. Well, you can order stripes on them in any color you want, and apparently. Yeah. I'd like to be the guy that Chevy hires that just says no. Yeah, like, that'd be bring right. a little Ferrari to this thing where it's <laughs> like, we want the yellow stripes on our yeah. blue, and I'm like, well, I'm sorry, you can't yeah, have those. They, they submit their, their build sheet, and you're like, yeah. no. I just give them some snooty email. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot complete your request. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is this is hideous. Yes. By your request, it is now confirmed garbage. There you go. Oh, there you go. That's yeah. perfect. Not going to do it. If their cash spends, if their check clears, it'd be like, ah. Nah. But that's the weirdest thing, because you posted a picture of a Corvette like that you pulled up alongside like a couple of weeks ago, and it had... That was the yellow one, the yellow Z06, the first Z06 I've seen. And that one looked mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. I think they look cool. Yeah. But they do it for me. I yeah. Think, I think what it is, is I think it's the, the black accents when they're color matched that's where it gets weird yeah I agree. yeah that's what it i was saying that's why with the, the yeah, white car with white it just was bizarre mm-hmm. yeah but there's they also have some really bad colors like there's that burnt orange kind of mm-hmm. i haven't i don't think i've seen that one out in the wild i like the dark colors so yeah with with your corollas are you trying to do like 100 percent like restoration or are you doing like period correct mods Kind of like what's the vibe you're going for? I'm one of each. So okay. the the car that I'd been trying to buy for uh, 20 years. Oh yeah, your your neighbor's friend's aunt. Yes, yeah, but that I've been pursuing for 20 years. That one is stock, and that's uh, just so impossible to find. And you're still that's pursuing cool. it, or do you own that? one? I got that one. Okay, that one. So you're just putting it back and keeping it. Yep. Stock. Yeah, yep. they kept it. It, it had been inside probably the past 17, 18 oh, wow. years. How yeah, yeah that's cool. How yeah. many miles were on it when you got it? <laughs> 297,000. Okay, so oh, it's wow. used. Yeah, yeah, it's no, been used. It that's awesome. Used. Yeah, and mechanically, it is used. Yeah, yeah. So that that's my first project where I feel like. I'm b- being uh, detail oriented mm-hmm. with it. You know, I want to do things right and put new bolts on stuff. Um, and then the other car is more of a. Are you aligning all the bolt car? heads so they're all like the, the text <laughs> or the, the flats or like the Phillips? Everything is like flat, you know, level. I that you've ruined the, everything I've done so far. Because I do that with like, when I do like home repairs and like I'm like even like the light switches or like mm-hmm. the wall plates. I have the uh, the slot of either vertical or perfectly horizontal, like that. ninety degree angle. I do that sometimes. Yeah, I wish I had that OCD. Me. That's a stretch for me. I yeah. want that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could develop it. Yeah, and, and I think I am little yeah. by little. Like on that car, it, it is more enjoyable to do those things now. J- Jason, did he did Jason take this? So um, one of my good friends, he uh, he was building a Lego set, and his girlfriend said, "Are you lining up all the Legos?" You can't do that though. And, but no, but he went <laughs> fuck, 
And now where he can, he does. Uh, so so he pays the attention. Lego, yeah. yeah, so the Lego on every little stud, oh, he tries to line them all up. Because you told wow. me about that. So yeah. I started doing that, but then there's certain pieces <laughs> oh, you, no, can't you can't do it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what Meanwhile, I'm like, I don't even care. I don't even know if this piece is straight. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> so with, with the... Do you have a name for your cars? Like with with this no, it, special twenty year old yeah. Ant's car, I haven't named a car in a long time. Uh, and what sucks is that they're both silver. I just kind of <laughs> came into it, so I can't say the silver one and the silver right. one. You know, one's got Japanese bumpers and it's two toned with black. The old one them. or the new old one? The new old one. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna get confusing. So my right. friend's aunt's the car is, a, is all stock USDM. There's yeah. the stock one. That's the stock one. Yeah, yeah. And then the modified one. That blue plates. It has blue plates. That's oh, right. Yellow. That's rad. That's are, stoked. Are you gonna try to get the plates refinished? Yes. Yeah. I'm. I'm scared to like get. Sh- well, I've heard some people will do like a personalized plate from the DMV of what those are, and then you just refinish. Yeah. Those letters. Is that the move? I've seen that. I've also seen people do reproduction plates. As long as they have the original one, because mm-hmm. they know that plate isn't being used. Right. Uh, and there's companies that'll actually restamp and do it just like the vintage blue and yellow plates, and it'll be brand new tin. All these people that. that are taking and painting their license plates. That's illegal. But they look terrible, too. Yeah, like all the, the black, black with the and white, white letters. It's always it's black awful. and white. It's, it's guys so in chargers bad. with black and white, and I, I don't know what it is. I, I was following a white Willie's Angry Jeep that had the American flag oh, stickers brr, on the side glass. Like that and, kind of Jeep? Yes, with like red. <laughs> LED accents and it was had, it the one we saw going here. Yes, Nick's it had Donald go Trump badges all over the side. Ooh, that's hot. Yeah, so you know they had questionable taste. Yeah, sure. But the plate was California red on a black plate with white numbers, white oh. characters. Oh, that that's so eyes. bad. Yeah, and they don't, they don't have the reflectivity. They're terrible. Yeah. You know what I did notice though is the like the plate on my truck. They're green. Like when you get light on them at night oh, they the turn hue, green yeah. it's super bizarre interesting yeah i think it's just whatever reflective material they use ah. it's it's an interesting i noticed it pulling into the driveway one day driving something else also so with these corollas is there something that is like impossible to find like is it in like an ashtray or like an interior piece is it the plastics that, that's the hassle or is it just everything is somewhat reasonably available just might be harder to find Oh, there's a lot that's impossible. Yeah. The the hatch plastics in the interior, just because dickheads like me for the past four <laughs> years have been throwing them in the trash, thinking we're going to be so fast, shedding <laughs> these pounds, you know, be breaking the Nurburgring record. Yeah, those are hard to find. Um, uncracked black dashes are hard to find, but now there's reproductions that are nearing OEM quality. It's interesting that people are doing repops for those. It's it's really good. And yeah, they, and cool. they sell really well. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of little engine bits that are tough to find. Like there's a, a plastic cover for. Um, specific relays it only has three in there mm. impossible to find hmm. um but when, when you're done with the car is this something you're gonna take to like radwood or is this something that you're like jccs you? probably okay yeah I, I, what i'm really looking forward to doing with that usdm car is taking it maybe down to the circle and parking it there oh, yeah. where i can see it yeah because you know, i'm nervous because i've had one stolen <laughs> and never recovered before you've had a car stolen oh yeah yeah it, it, was, car? it was an a86 it was a hatchback oh, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah did you get it back uh, no, and I got a piece of it back. I, I for about seven or eight years was looking. I just was so mad because I loved yeah. this car. Yeah. It was the best A86 I've ever had. And it was my color. favorite. It was red, 85 hatchback. I like how perfect. Grayson's interviewing skills is just jumped when he got a stolen <laughs> car. Yeah, you know, he's, he's, he's on the case. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this car had, I was, I was a teenager when I had it. And so I could, this is also before you got good Japanese parts here. Right, right. So one of the more desirable taillights came from Japan or the Sprinter taillights. They have a black bar along the top. Sure. Me being 17, I bought a, a rattle tint from AutoZone. <laughs> yeah. And I it's masked it own. poorly. And, yeah, and yeah. on my mom's front lawn, I sprayed paint on the top of it. And one of the things that I fucked up, this is, again, my detail-orientedness, was there was a blade of grass that masked it. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, and so you knew it was yours. So, yeah, I yeah, knew yeah, it was yeah. mine. And I saw I saw the taillights for sale from someone in Apple Valley like eight years later. Oh, that's crazy. And then I looked at his other for sale posts, and he had my Buddy Club P1 wheels. And he had a red hood that had a little oh, part of a cigarette toilet. I'm like, oh, shit, that's my car. So me and uh, you know, like three buddies, we went in our truck you know, up, yeah. to, up to Apple Valley. And I, I called this guy. I'm like, hey, I'm here. And I thought to myself, like, I'm not going to, like, get it back. Something's obviously up yeah, here. Yeah. And they're probably shady characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not a tough guy. Yeah. But I, I uh, sentimentally would like to buy back the hood. Right. Just to have with me. I was really beat up about this car getting stolen. So I called the guy. He's like, oh, yeah, I'll come out. So this dude, I swear to you, like, I'm, I'm fairly tall. I'm 6'2". Yeah. He must have been 6'5". Okay. <laughs> he, 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 we waited, like, three minutes. Saw no action at the house. This guy who's 6'5", 
came out of this shed in the backyard wearing boxing gloves, all sweaty, and he had long hair. He looked like a like a pro wrestler. Oh, that sounds fun. It, I was just Rob? like, I was like, yeah, it was kind of like, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck did I just get? I'm gonna right. pay him eighty bucks for this hood and get the hell out of here. So he, we ended up showing me the Corolla in the garage because I still got to dig anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got killed. Yeah. It's okay. It's over used yeah, parts on a sure. Corolla. That's yeah. a good legacy to have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Forget having kids or anything. Right. <laughs> so um, he showed me his car and I looked at the chassis and it was originally a blue car. And it yeah. wasn't my car, but he had all my parts. That's weird. So I asked him. Yeah, it was weird. I just was like, so where'd you buy this? He's like, oh man, I bought it from these shady guys like two blocks down that way. And when I bought it, they had a bunch of nine millimeter guns on their table. He's like, yeah, they're like local <laughs> drug dealer bad boys. And I was like, funny and, it, uh, and i was like so it had all this shit on it when you bought it he's like he's like yeah i don't get it it's like a bunch of crap didn't even match the car and right I was, like, I was like okay i feel comfortable yeah, yeah, yeah. I so he, him, he wasn't the dude he wasn't basically. the dude yeah yeah, yeah. okay and he was so nice he, yeah. he was like dude take the hood for free take the wheels take i was like no no you bought those yeah, yeah, yeah you're yeah. not the dick you don't yeah. have to pay the price here um but i did i did buy the hood from him and i took that home with me he was like apologetic and i was like you don't have to be yeah, he didn't yeah, yeah. You, and, and literally he he bought his car legit it just had my parts on right it. yeah so um, that closed the loop on that car getting stolen for me. That's crazy. Yeah, chassis never recovered. So is that kind of hood going to go to use on one of your cars now? <laughs> it's, it's sitting in store of Buddy's storage in Vegas. All right. Uh, <laughs> I think, yeah. There's so it went from like Apple Valley, Valley to Vegas. Vegas. Yes. Yeah, yeah, all right. Whatever. I don't know how it ended up in Vegas. I'm uh, sure. He had it go with stuff and didn't realize it was mine. Oh, got it. Yeah. But okay. it still exists. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It was, me, like, it was such a big deal to me back then, and now I'm like, ah, whatever, I found it. I think you could like, hang it on the garage. In the, you know, I would like something. to. Yeah, yeah, if I get it back at some point. Yes, yeah. that's we'll cool. It'll yeah. be a backstop for a dartboard or something. Yeah. <laughs> I need to build one of those, actually. A backstop or a dartboard? I have the dartboard. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just need the to backstop. put a place to actually utilize the dartboard. So is there like a... Like when, when you look at like American classic cars or even like Porsches, you have Pelican parts, you have classic industries, you yeah, have certain brands. Is there Corolla? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of aftermarket support brands. There's yeah. Some good ones out there, you know, and, and really the resellers that bring stuff over from Japan or aggregate parts here are, are a godsend. Right. Some people get mad at them because they, they, you know, make money for themselves. But cool. if you can get Fair me a part enough. I can't get otherwise, please yeah. do. That's, Isn't that kind of what that's, it's the service that's a of the business? business. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you got one that's going to be a restoration. The other one is... The other one's kind of a, a street car. Go to the track once a year. Take it out drifting once in a while. Take it to a time attack once in a while. You know, just all around something to, to drive. Yeah. Really. Are you going to tune the motor or is it going to try to keep it stock or... Um, that one, my original intent was to keep it with a stock 4AG, but now that I have this other one that yeah. I wasn't expecting to come into my life, if now you're pops, looking for an SR20. I'll do a build. No, no, I wouldn't do that. Why? I like my 4AGs. It got to be an underdog. That's uh, a V8. V8. Oh, terrible. No, that would be awful. Yeah. <laughs> but independent rotary. throttle bodies, you can do some. Oh, V12. Stuff. Yeah. I just put a rotary in it. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that would be getting a little Tes- warm in here. Oh, that'd be Tesla, weird. Tesla swap it. Oh, God. Honestly, pure blasphemy. There are there. I am not mad at some of the stuff they're Tesla swapping. That's cool. It's cool. Some of it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Not it's, this. There is any old Volkswagen Beetle. You can Tesla swap it all you want. Yeah. That is a useless car. Yeah, EV West has a whole <laughs> like plug and play yeah. bolt in solution. I never car. got into that obsession with Volkswagen. Like really? so many people Those are my first so, cars of VW. I could, cool. I didn't get it. It's, uh, I think that when you get into them, that gas smell yeah. kills a certain part of <laughs> part your, your brain, brain. <laughs> and it atrophies, and then yeah. you just, just begin to identify with it. No. They're I, charming little cars. I wanted a, a square back. I had a square for back. For probably 15 minutes. Oh. I mean, that's as long as longer. my obsession lasted. I had a 67 square back. Okay. I was, it was a really cool car. Yeah. Um, and that Gia that's my, that's my dad's that I brought down, I got to bring that by and have you drive that, because it's a... Air cooled VWs are an interesting and cool experience, right? And I could see how you could let go of it. Bugs, I think not that cool. No, I mean I've driven bugs. Yeah, I've driven. They don't feel that. Eh. No, my, my buddy's got a, a '67 bug that was his mom's first car. Okay, and it, it's now got a 2.3 liter motor in it. Just how she always wanted it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's mom it's, always wanted to stroke. Yeah. It. It's got a a roll cage behind the the front seats with um i want to say it's like four sheets of mdf bolted to it and a 32 inch clarion thunderdome subwoofer oh it's okay. literally a rolling speaker box that's ridiculous it's so fun though. Oh, i fast speaker box too. i did learn though if you, you can change the port frequency by rolling the windows up and down oh that's funny <laughs> i did realize pretty early on though that if you ever do get revved on by a bug it's not worth it yeah don't do it they're so freaking fast scary. some of them yeah. yeah yeah i still don't get it yeah Eh, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Not everything's for everyone. I'm, I'm, I fall in love with everything with cars. I'm I'd car. rather have a Taurus SHO. 
I'm not mad at that. No. Would I rather? I'd rather have a, a Taurus SHO than a, a Beetle. Yeah. Oh, but I'd rather have. Okay, like you're a making the kid yawn. That was a huge gas. No. Was that about the SHO or the Beetle? Your Taurus. You got, you got to drive a. You got to drive a Taurus. They're pretty damn fun. You can do like Conan O'Brien edition, just the the dark green over tan. Yeah. That, I don't care what it looks what? like. Yeah. There was a. There used to be a shop in Huntington called Show Shop, and they were building like 900 horsepower Tauruses. Wow. That seems like cool. a missed opportunity for the shop name. It should be like Show Nuff or something. Yeah. Show Stoppers. Show, yeah, yeah. Show Shop. Yeah. Show shop, show enough. Sleeping. Listen, man, I didn't name the thing. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Why is there a place that sells safety gear called Subi Sports and they don't sell Subi? So when I worked oh, at shit. Circuit City, uh, back in the day, you could make appointments for a car stereo installation. So, I remember that. And so like, I, you would have to type in the name and you could type in, you could make reservations for the install at your location or mm-hmm. at other locations. So we would screw around and make reservations for cars at other locations. <laughs> And so one would be a, a pink Latoris. <laughs> and so when you say it's a pink Latoris. Yeah, I get yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I hear it. <laughs> so we would do shit like that. Or we would it's make... It's really mean, man. It's descriptive. Yeah, that's true. But we would we would also schedule installations that were like theoretically possible, but just like horrendous nightmare jobs. Like, oh yeah, we want to do, you know, four six by nines across the rear deck of this Buick Regal or oh, something sure. like that. Where you, you know, get the... The tin snips and the air, the body saw and all work to do it. Because yeah. Grandpa really needs that. Yeah, but yeah. because we can make the appointments for other locations, we could screw their schedule right. over. And, and sometimes we would actually book real appointments, and then they would think it was a joke. And oh, then cancel no. them. And the car would show up. Oh, no. Yeah, that's funny. That's why they went to the same day install and got it was, like a, it was like a brown Latouris came up yeah. and showed up at the shop. So you're sure you're Chapman Crafted VW Trend shirt. Did you go yeah, to that then? That I was did. yesterday? Yeah. Did you guys get to go? I didn't go, but I, I love, the love the brewery. Yeah. Yeah. I, I ended up uh, having a bunch of people over. We watched Le Mans. Oh, okay. For that's like classier. 10 hours. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's classier. I'm wearing my classy Hamburglar Do Bad yeah, Shit like t-shirt. It. That's good. I've got a Pikes Peak shirt on. Yeah. So. Got oxygen. As and long K-1 as we're all yeah, K-1. Yeah. describing our shirts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I was going to say, all, well, three of the four of us have automotive theme shirts on. I'm the odd one out with yeah, my Hamburglar. Right. Well, you could do bad shit with a car. Did, I think, yeah, yeah. Uh, they probably had a Hamburglar in a car you McDonald's need to get away vehicle. Thing. Yeah. 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 There so the show yesterday then so yeah. it was pretty cool it was cool uh vw it's the first Trends, time they've done this right magazine yeah, yeah. okay first they apparently they had to run through a bunch of hoops with the city to do it which is which feels cool well me. there's not yeah. a lot of parking yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so what they did is they closed down they took over that lot that's uh by omega burger yep um and they had a good handful of cars that's there. cool and the, I, I thought the best part was standing at the show and seeing everybody that drove their cars kind of coming by, you know, yeah. the, all the work in project, That's cool. in progress cars. Yeah, those are my favorite. That uh, that parking lot right by Omega Burger before they built the the uh, structure. parking structure, obviously. Yeah. But yeah. every Wednesday night, that was the 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 spot. What for yeah. what? Who'd when I was there? growing up, that's when that's where all the muscle car meat was. Oh, that's every cool. Wednesday night. Oh, for awesome. me, that was Fuddruckers wow. every well, Tuesday well, night. Or my dad. Rich. So my dad used to his he had a used car dealer, and it was what the flower pot. Yeah. Or whatever that now it's a junk shop, right? Yeah, yeah. That was his shop. Really? And so we would I would work there on, you know, after school or whatever, yeah. and then I'd take either my car or like we just go walk over and oh, cool. have a burger at Omega and wander around all the I mean oh, they were like good. super birds and super bees. That's and badass. All kinds of like Malibus and name it. I mean it was there, it was awesome. So and was that Vol- was the spot. Was Volkswagen your first car? Uh first like real project. Yeah. It was a sixty seven square back. What was your first car? That was it. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that one, that was, I, I was really, I'm really lucky with cars coming to me that I really want. Like, I really wanted a 67 square back. Yeah. And I was talking about it too much at high school. So <laughs> my Nessa was like, I think my grandpa has one of those. You know, and I was like, no, it can't be this. Like, yeah. it's got to be some other shit that has round headlights. And she's like, no, 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 So, so I went over there and he's this grumpy old dude that is, actually lives right behind the Orange Mall. Okay. And it was like, you always hear these stories. I think it's like in that movie Up. Where the developers bought all the houses, and then you got one crabby son of a bitch that just doesn't want to sell. No matter what, he's that guy, right? And he had about five or six cool cars in the backyard. All he and he was like never out of the chair, just like he's done. Yeah, he's now you're not finishing any of the projects. Right. And so he had a handful of classics, and lo and behold, it was a '67 square back. That's awesome. Yeah, he ended up selling it to me. So that was the first first real project and and first car that I owned too. That's cool. You ever check out oldbug.com? No, what's that? It's a it's basically a site that sells like old Volkswagens <laughs> and, and rare stuff. But my buddy Randy runs the site, hmm. but he's just finished a uh, Brubaker box. Nobody's actually named Randy. 
So it's a it was a kit car from that is like, pretty cool. Yeah. That's the cool. That's the best insult I've ever. Heard. I don't know if it was really an insult, but the no. way you said it, like nobody's renamed Randy. No, there's no way. I don't believe it. It is an interesting name. Yeah, but I guess maybe Randall, and he goes by Randy. Sure, that just sounds made up. Like anytime you're calling bullshit on just being called Randy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Carl. Yeah, how do you how do you defend that? But yeah. he, he's got a a Brubaker box, which is basically a weird van shaped kit car that goes on a Volkswagen uh, chassis. Sure, just on, on the. There's a guy uh, the next street over that's got like three Vanigans in the driveway. Oh, okay, he's that's my it. kind of people. Yeah, I mean it's cool. I don't. It's never been one of those cars I understand having multiples of. I like my van again, sure. but I don't want to. There's a Westphalian over there too. Or three. Oh, yeah, yeah, pretty nice one with the the pop roof. And yeah, everything. that's yeah. one. I, that's the same I got. Yeah. yeah, those are pretty cool. I think my two favorite Volkswagens would be the Thing or a Minx. Like I don't. Yeah. I don't what does really the Thing a, do for you? I just like the fact that it's just so boxy and ugly, yeah. and it looks decent slammed. Like I don't know why. Like when you look at like you think of like, like the Cali style VW bugs with like the two tone yeah. in lowered, and like it looks fine. But I think the 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 thing is just that much more unexpected. But then also just because it's just so odd. I mean the, the name. It's a thing. The yeah. name goes a long way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that kind of conveys the image of it. It just stands out. Hmm. Like there- must be German for something. Yeah. I, 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 th- I don't even know what the hell the German it would be type something. Yeah, it's got some weird yeah. name. Yeah. It's it's actually some weird long name. Yeah. Uh, there's a guy. The guy down the street's got a Manx. Uh, the the guy. So our neighbor owns the Canberra Beach Shop over off Batavia. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And he's got a Manx, but he also has some he rad has cool 70s stuff. vans out there all yeah, the time. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Well, I'm we into did, that. We did the uh, Grand National Roadster show, and walking through, they had a whole section of like vans. Yeah. Like the whole van and thing with with the car the crazy carpet yep. and. The, the murals on the side. Dude, the, one of the ones he took, did you go to the Orange Circle car show this year? I did, yeah. So one of the vans that he brought was, uh, I can't remember what color it is, but it's got the full on, like the lift up side door, <laughs> shag carpet, yeah. the old TV that's like this big, oh, yeah, the whole that. deal sink. That was bitching. Wow. I bet bitching's an appropriate word for that. That is the word you yeah, use for that. That's the only way to call it. Yeah. Groovy, maybe? But not Randy. Not Randy. Yeah. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't buy it. <laughs> Randy just sounds so made up. But Something's not adding up here. No. <laughs> Randy. Have you also have you seen the guy with the wrought iron VW bug? Yeah, what's up with that? I don't guy? get that. Uh, have you seen this guy? Yeah, my buddy Randy owns one of them. Of course it is. That, that, that was one a, that was always driving around that there, looks like a gate. Yeah, there's yeah. an artist in uh, Mexico that was the one that that made those. Oh, that's and such a so weird. The wrought iron pattern have. is different. Uh, for each one, yeah, and so you can kind of tell by the way it was designed. I'm looking, I'm scrolling through Randy's feed looking for a post because he had one seemingly not too long ago. There's a guy that drives around here with one. I see him all the time. Yeah, the yeah. white, uh, the white. He looks like the kind of guy who just might like, I don't know, like, like I'm gonna be somewhere and he's gonna be like, hey, anyway, we're going to this place later. It's kind of a swingers thing. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to ride in the wrought iron <laughs> fence car to a weird swingers party, dude. He's gonna invite you to some weird crap yeah, for he's, sure. He's not. Yeah. you're not gonna go to hometown buffet again. No. Yeah. No, that dude is up to some weird crap, <laughs> and he's never. I've never seen anybody else in that car with him. Good. That's yeah. that, is, that means nobody's <laughs> lowering their standards. Nobody's to falling to for it. That shit. <laughs> Yeah. So the other, yes, yeah, that's actually pretty artful. So there's in the middle. He, he there. posted a picture. There's yeah, three yeah. different designs, so like the wrought iron. I think it's the bottom one is potentially. It, no, it, I think it's a convertible, isn't it? Oh, you know what? You might be right. Think, yeah, it's, the guy around here. It's hard to tell because it's there's, there's so missing. much focus yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is an interesting concept. Randy's picked up some odd oh, cars over the years. So he's got like uh, an old um, Accord where it's just the two front halves welded together, and the all right. And it drives in both directions. Yeah, that's, it's got two steering wheels. That's weird. Yeah, like here's a photo of him and Jay Leno driving it. All right. Well, huh? So <laughs> Randy with the odd name, yeah. Randy has a taste for some odd cars as well. Apparently, Aww. that's Randy. But if you get a chance, yeah, check, check out Randy. Bug in Box. So B U G N B O X. Okay. On Instagram, you'll see some of his shenanigans. Did you watch any of Lamar yesterday? No. No. Really? Um, I was think I saw it somewhere. We were at HRE Watching at the open house. Yeah. They had a, they had the live feed going. Well, so it rained it did. as it oh. does, and so it was absolute chaos. I think they had sixty two cars that started and twenty two oh. dropped out, which was the I think last year they only had eight cars that 
didn't finish. Wow. So a lot of cars crashing, yeah. a lot of action, which was well, great. NASCAR test out. And then the NASCAR, and the thing was freaking awesome. And it took forever. They finally started showing more footage of it. They showed in car, which uh-huh. was really cool. And then they would, I mean, to see that thing go by one of the prototypes or That's be what around was it. Crazy, the scale difference. They, it is huge in comparison. <laughs> yeah. It is hilarious. It's like, the, it's almost like a van in comparison to any of the rest of the so cars that cool. were out there. It was awesome. I love that. It sounded amazing. And they did, I mean, apparently it was running lap times like a couple seconds faster than the GT cars. Hell yeah. And it's not, I mean, it's a NASCAR body yeah. with a real suspension Is and a transaxial. On the, the next gen chassis? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they put a real suspension in it. It's got a transaxial. That's it's got cool. a sequential. Well, and they're making a lot of moves for, for more road racing stuff in NASCAR, like more road courses. As they should. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that's yeah. where it actually like gets fun. Mm hmm. I, I only came to start liking NASCAR a couple of years ago, and I'm such a like a Toyota nerd that it was nice to have something to root for. Sure, but some of those races, it's one thing's nice because you can get up and walk away, and you don't have to feel like you're missing anything. Because you're not. Because you're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then when something big happens, it feels like a big pop. So it has it has some fun to I, it. I've only been to one. I went to one NASCAR race with, at Irwindale, uh-huh. and it was pretty much a giant yellow flag. <laughs> so it was fun. it wasn't very fun. Yeah, that's not fun. But I went as a guest of Interstate Batteries, so that's it was free cool. beer. So. Look at that. Yeah, that part worked. Yeah, it was fun seeing like actual oh, images and you see yeah. the scale differential. It is huge. You it's know what's almost funny? like the BMW meme where they it, had pictures of the BMW like a G, the yeah. GT touring car series and they had the BMW just expanded to look so much bigger i think it's funny that it there were a couple of shots of it because at night mm-hmm. they would show it go by and it almost looked exactly like the six stud wide lego camaro that they came out with the <laughs> champion for a while ago but it was it was rad wow. to watch it was super cool but the scale That's differential so cool. is just so nutty just, yeah because the camaro is not necessarily a huge car but compared to the prototypes that well, even racing, really just, tiny. it's pretty rad to see jensen button drive it too yeah that's pretty awesome my uh our old neighbor, Grace and I, our old neighbor, Joe, is working with Jensen. Uh, and because Jensen Button and Ann Anstead are the backers or the guys behind uh, Radford, which is a car brand that's kind of based oh. on the Lotus. Lotus based yeah, cars. Yeah. 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 And so they're, they're, rice, they're racing at Pikes Peak. Oh, cool. And so uh, my buddy Joe has been getting to spend yeah. some time with Jensen. He says, Jensen's actually a pretty chill dude. Oh, I'm sure he's super yeah. nice. The other weird thing was the, okay, so the Hertz... Porsche uh-huh. was sponsored by Singer. Singer sponsored two cars, which I thought was kind of weird. Yeah, what's up with that? I don't know. It's a lot of money those for those are making some coin, dude. <laughs> uh, and what's interesting, and look, I, I'm not talking shit. I think they're really well made cars and they're really pretty. Yeah, but you're basically just taking a 911 and making it a little bit bigger and doing a really custom interior. Yeah, like that's all you're doing. Cool engine stuff. Sure, you know what I mean. But you're. And charging outrageous money for yeah, it. They, got good. they did good with their branding. I, yeah, yeah, for I, sure. I've them. known a couple of people that have worked there. Yeah. That no longer work there. I know somebody that's there now. Yeah. And I've I, only heard horrible things. It's, maybe it's the still end of the Porsche world. Yeah, maybe. It, still well, end means breastfeeding, by the way, in German. <laughs> <laughs> and I know this because I would, get, you know, have to look for stuff on Google Images when I work oh, there. Man. In a, you know, stillin. Yeah. You just see like, oh, there's a tent. Poor there's Steve. A, yeah. <laughs> he's for, a nice guy. For, Steve's cool. Yeah. He's, he's, yeah. He's he's cool. Yeah. From what I've heard with with Singer, the it's just this frenzy kind of startup attitude, like all day, every day. Yeah. So it's always a rush oh. the mm. entire time. So it's just never ending. Sure. And mm. so I think that's probably the biggest drawback because when you look at the products, they're pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, they're really neat. But I mean, it is just a. We took a car that already exists, made it a little bit different, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. charged a lot for a it. A lot, yeah. And even if I mean, the the craftsmanship is really cool. Yeah, it's really yeah. cool. The details. interiors are amazing. Very neat, right? Yeah. Super neat, but yeah. not not for me. Yeah, That's at least not that much. But at any rate, so Le Mans was pretty cool, and I I watched I don't know however last night, and then I woke up this morning to watch the end of it. To then go back to sleep. There you go. Yeah, Ferrari yeah. ended up winning. Yep. And this is the first time Ferrari's been in the race. Fifty eight like years. 50, yeah, some yeah. years. Yeah, which is great. It's cool to see them come back and win. And I was really hoping Peugeot would do better than they did. Why did you hope Peugeot would do better? Because that's probably one of the coolest cars. Oh, out is there. it? Like it's so cool looking. Oh, looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It oh. just it looks incredible. Okay. They that's another story. They haven't been there in a long time. So that's to cool. see them come and, and do a good job. Yeah. I mean they were they were leading for a while. That's cool. So it was cool. It was yeah. cool. It was good racing. Mm-hmm. It was like I said, it, a lot of crashes and incidents and so it was worth the it's the first time I think I've sat down and really watched Le Mans in quite a few I've years. I've only ever watched clips. Yeah. 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 It's it's a hard I mean it's a twenty four hour race. What do you it's do? It's a lot. And but, I, I never nailed it. Even with F one, like 
I think everyone's cool. Yeah. But I feel like I had like five attempts to, to wake up really early and watch it. And I get up at like 2.35 a.m. Yeah. And they're like, well, we're going to start staging for qualifying. <laughs> right. I'm just like, no, at 2 a.m. Yeah. I said, fuck this sport. Like, yeah, I'm not yeah. doing this. And then I try it like five times and I just gave up. Like, I would watch it with, I had a cousin and we would get up early and watch it together. Yeah. And yeah. then once we kind of stopped doing that. Yeah. I, I actually, I think Drive to Survive is a better way to watch F1. I think that's true. Because you get all the cool stuff and you, you get some stories, of the drama that you want. Stories, yeah, yeah, and the stories. And you don't have to wake up at 2.30 yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Are you guys going to watch the, the Vegas race? Uh, no. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like Now that they have Miami, they have Vegas, they have um, they Circuit Texas, of the Americas, yeah. it's like you got three races in the U.S. And it's like, I still don't Tickets care. for that thing are insanely expensive, too. Was it like Taylor Swift level? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because like yeah. Miami wasn't too bad last year. And so I had friends that went. And then this year, they got the updated pricing, and it just blows it out of the water. What are we talking? Give me a ballpark here. Like the, yeah. It was like you had to buy a whole package. Yeah. So it was like... Oh, no. 2500 bucks a ticket kind of thing. Whoa. Well, they're doing a thing. Like, I saw a deal where you... So, it's with the room and, like, the ticket and everything yeah, else. Yeah. But they're, like, twenty five grand. Yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. It's insane. What? Yeah. It's stupid. Uh, yeah. And, like, Las Vegas was kind of the same thing. It's just absurd pricing. So, you can get... That's what I'm talking about Vegas. Yeah. So, you yeah. can't even just be there. No. You're going to go stay with your aunt in Henderson. Yeah. And then, and then Uber in. Yeah. Get a helicopter. Okay. It'd yeah. be cheaper just to rent a helicopter to fly over the track the entire time. Right. And probably to get a seat. Yeah, I don't. I don't get. Yeah, because even like the hotels that have views of the strip, those rooms are just an oh, yeah. outrageous nice, price, right? That would be a cool experience. When they first announced it, I was talking to some friends. I was like, "What if like we jump on it right now? Yeah, get a room. Yeah, plan to do it. Yeah, and then when they started announcing more stuff, and you have to get this packed, you have to do this. I was like, forget it. Ugh. I don't. I would like to go to an F one race. Me too. But I'd rather go to Europe and do it if I'm going to spend that kind of money. And that's the thing is I've I've had buddies that have done the the F one races in Europe and the tickets are just affordable. Right. Like surprisingly, it's just easy and just great. Thing. Damn it. Yeah. It's (laughs) damn it. There's actually like a it's pretty pretty sure every year it falls within like a week week and a half window. Yeah. Where you could do uh, the Isle of Man TT Mm -hmm. and Le Mans. And there's a museum, a Mazda museum in Germany. So you could do a bunch of stuff. Ooh. And I'd love to fly over, rent a motorcycle, go to and do all that, that and then cool. come home. That'd be well, awesome. That'd be really fun. Especially on a motorcycle. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah, the way to do it. Ryan's done some motorcycle adventures. He's gone to Alaska. He's he's done Ooh. all the way down to Argentina. Whoa. Mm-hmm. What's, what's some of the big moments from that kind of thing? <sighs> it's got to be a lot, right? Uh, there's a lot. I think it, what... Like the trip that I did, so I spent three ish months on the road up to I went up to the Arctic Ocean, uh-huh. um, and the uh, the toe shot I think was the uh, yeah the the sour toe cocktails. You did the sour moment. toe? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way! Yeah. yeah. Whoa! It's weird. He, he butt chugged it, so it was yeah. in there. Yeah. This thing did it touch your what, lip. It touched your lip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit! Yeah, it's bizarre. Does it not count if it doesn't touch your lip? Right. Yeah, you don't get. Fuck. You don't even get a certificate for that. No, like, it's got to touch your mouth. Do you mouth get a there. certificate? Yeah, I have a certificate. Is Where's this? Why is this not hanging not... in front of everyone? Why is it showing? <laughs> I know, right? Like I should have walked in. You be like, listen, <laughs> stop what you're doing. Here it you're is. Not coming in. Yeah. You need to know this about me. This is the I one thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's. I have it somewhere. Like in the midst of moving the studio and getting everything reset up, I've got a. I've got it. I need to just get it framed. Blow it up. Can we get like a fake toe next to it? It, right. Like, oh, tell dude. me everything about this. The, this <laughs> okay, so <laughs> so it's at, it's at the, the downtown hotel uh-huh. in uh, in Dawson City. Okay, and, and that's in Alaska. It, no, this is in Yukon. Yukon. So it's okay. a, on the Yukon River. Okay. There's only two cities in the Yukon. There's okay. Whitehorse and there's this place. Okay. And I woke up in Whitehorse after it. Actually, Whitehorse, believe it or not, was kind of a cool little town. Okay. Met a bunch of cool people. That's nice. Went out and hung out with them. They took me out drinking. And uh, they had actually, they actually had like have a pretty hipster restaurant. It's bizarre. Oh. But we went from uh, went from there. Woke up the next morning. Show up at this um, this gas station in, in Carmex. Carmex Yukon. It's literally a gas station. That's uh-huh. it. Yeah. And you know, I'm pumping gas. There's a couple other guys on motorcycles, and I'm doing the, doing the solo trip. I'm yeah. just doing it myself. Yeah. And I go in, buy a sticker and a Red Bull and some whatever else. I yeah. come out. And this guy comes up. Good. He's like, "Hey, can I ask you a question?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Do you think my tires are okay?" I'm like, what do you mean, man? He's like, well, I'm going. He you know, tells me what he's doing. Is he on he, a bike too? Yeah. Okay. So him and it's him and there's four guys. They're okay. on, in a group, and I'm like, I don't know, dude. Yeah, they're fine. They yeah. look fine to me. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. 
I can't Did answer. Low, low tread? Or? No, I mean, he was just worried that, like, oh, do I need new tires right now? Because oh, okay. they, they, he was going all the way up to tuck. He needed a little bit of a little bit. Yeah, and I was like, I don't know, man. My my motto is safety third. I'm, you're asking the wrong guy. And he's like, what? <laughs> safety third? Yeah, so oh, I, gave, got stickers I gave him a safety third sticker to put on his bike. <laughs> I said, you got to put this where you see it every time you get on the bike. Just yeah. relax, man. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And I, we turns out we're going, we're on the same itinerary. We're going to Dawson to, you know, at the same time. We're staying for the same amount of time. Yeah. Staying in the same hotel. So I was like, I'll, you know, we ride together, whatever. So meeting those guys was really cool. I That's still cool. talk to a bunch of them. Nice. And uh, so anyways, we get there that night and we're hanging out at the, we, you know, get our rooms, go over to the bar and we're hanging out. And I, I told Marshall, I was like, hey, you know what they're famous for here, right? So, like, yeah, what, so. I got, I got to ask a lot of yeah. questions along the okay. way. This is like a big sure. deal to me. Yeah. Yeah. Done this toe shot. I read yeah. about this years ago. And yeah. That was the coolest thing I ever heard. Yeah. Did you, before you set out on this trip, yeah. did you know about the toe? Yes. I've heard about this thing for years. Thank you. Right. This, this is a is thing beautiful. where like, this is beautiful. I know this is happening. Okay. But and these so, guys somehow didn't know? No. So the one guy, Marshall does. Marshall's like, oh yeah, I know, but okay. they don't. But Randy never heard of it. Yeah, Randy never heard of it. <laughs> he goes, the other guys don't know. I go, okay, cool. Let's just keep it. Yeah. Right. So the way it works, like you, you go in the bar, you're hanging out, we're just drinking beer, we've yeah. got food and whatever. Yeah. And about nine o'clock is when the captain comes in. And I've got a whole other story about this guy. Captain. Is so, he like a regular? Uh, oh, man. Is he the, 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 he's the one that transports the toe? The he is the, the toe, toe master. The toe master? Yeah, he is the keeper of said toe. Oh. So he, like the guy comes in and it's, it's already been a bizarre day like I, I i this whole story i could tell you the whole story but it, it yeah. has been a b- bizarre day to this point i like it so marsh and i go and we buy five shots of whiskey we set them on the table and we go don't touch him hey, hey, hey no stop yeah and they're this like how you lure him out no, no no this is how like these guys didn't know what we were doing oh, so you buy your own so shot of whiskey better. right you have to get your own shot of whiskey <laughs> So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go line up. I'll hold our spot in line. And these other four guys are like, what are you dudes talking oh about? Or God. three guys. They're like, what are you guys talking about? Oh, no. Mars like, don't worry about it. Pick your wh- Take your whiskey. Come stand in line. But don't drink it. Yeah. yeah, don't drink it. Yeah. And so this guy comes in and he sits down at this table and he start, you know, he takes this giant plate of salt and he puts a mummified toe on top of it and he has a log book and certificates and everything. No, yeah. wow. this is the and captain. This is the captain. You and the captain. And so you wait in line. So you buy and the whiskey. So you have your whatever shot. that price yeah. is. I think it was like nine bucks or ten for, bucks for, for the this. whiskey shot. No, 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 no. I'd say price for the toe. Yeah, yeah that's price what I was trying to figure. So yeah. there's a there's an upcharge. That's fine. Yeah. Whatever. Just like F one. Not yeah, nine or ten bucks. Exactly. <laughs> so you wait in line, you sit down and for I said, you know, I'm gonna go first. Because yeah. if I don't I don't wanna watch you idiots do this. Thank you. So Thank I you. sit down and the the captain t- he takes your ID and he logs in. You know, oh. he logs you in, your toe number, what whatever. What does the captain look like? Give he is a very skinny old white man yes. dressed as a captain That's right with a with be. a hat and everything <laughs> is, is the yukon near water i don't know oh, yeah, it's on a river it's on okay. the yukon river okay okay and so he is uh he's a river captain okay and apparently was actually a river captain oh, okay and he's old like the grizzled beard oh okay. you know like looks like a river captain. oh yeah it's, but skinny and i have pictures of him for some oh. reason when i think pirates i don't think canadian like, not pirates like i know but i mean like know. captain like when i think like you've got the little things on your lapels yeah, yeah that okay, kind of or yeah. whatever the epaulets yeah so anyway so he uh he sits down he takes all your stuff and he writes it all down and he you stick your shot of whiskey and he's across like this we're yeah. across the table oh my god toes right here on a giant plate of salt dear god does he grab and his he, bare fingers he, he, yep he picks it up and he holds it in front of you and he says you can drink it fast you can drink it slow but your lips must touch the toe. And oh, it, and that's drops the coolest it in. thing I've ever heard. And in then my you life. grab it and you go whoop, and throw it back, and the toe rolls onto your lips. <laughs> How big is this cup? Is it like a? It's a regular shot. Like shot a, glass. no, it's like a, uh, a shooter. No, it's a regular uh, like whiskey glass. And okay. which toe is it? Would you say? So this one must have been Wait, a second there's toe. Different toe. Oh yeah. So this is the seventh toe. <laughs> Somebody ate. Yeah, so the original toe oh, is... Oh, you do not tell me that. The original toe is gone. Uh, one of them has been eaten. Somebody stole one. <laughs> like, all kinds of... And so these people, like, actually donate their toes Dude, to this place. I think you've given me a new purpose in it life. It is... Okay, and you need to go. There's so many other reasons that you need to go, but be this the guy is, who eats the next. This toe. is amazing. Like, oh no! Run don't away do from it. the captain. Don't do it. I'm not gonna do that. So the but anyway, so it, it does that. You set the <gasps> thing down. He retrieves it out of your glass, sets it back on the the pile of salt, and the next person comes out, and it is black. So who? <laughs> I have pictures. It's gnarly. It's not like it is. Holy it is like shit. nasty, oh. mummified. Oh, I feel toe. sick. It's amazing. Was it doesn't taste that bad. Could you see toenail? Oh yeah. Oh, so and two here. knuckles. So it must have been a second toe because it's like it's got double knuckles. Yeah, yeah, it's long. Yeah. So oh, who yeah. went after you? 
Uh, I think Marshall was next, and so Marshall sits down. Marshall yeah. know what was coming or no? Yeah, he Marshall knew. Okay, he knew. Okay. It's the and guys the other guys after. are like, "What on earth are we doing? Like, you're all doing it. Yes, it doesn't matter. We're doing it. Yes. Yeah. So Marshall sits down, and I, I'd have to. This isn't going to make sense out of context a little bit, but the captain is basically obsessed with Marshall, and I'm pretty sure they're going to get married in some <laughs> weird way. They should. But Mar- the Marshall had this little curl of hair uh-huh. in, in the front of his thing, and the uh-huh. captain goes, "Oh, I really want that." And I jump and go, <laughs> How I go, could you deny the captain? Yeah, I go, so take it. And yeah. I grab Marshall's hair and pull out the thing. The captain stands up with a knife? pocket knife out of his pocket right. as he's going, cuts it off and sticks it in his vest. What? Yeah. <laughs> So he's this died. is the coolest thing that I am just, I can't, I'm not going to sleep tonight. He has, about it. I'm so happy to hear The this. captain has part of Marshall's hair oh, in still. his pocket. They're yeah. together. Oh, yeah. Who's going to be drinking shots with Marshall's hair in it? He's going to be sprinkling oh, it in. I don't know. No, oh the God. captain had very specific thing that he was going to use that for. I'll tell you. Off, oh, off, off, oh off that's air. awesome. So oh, did like the that. other three guys do it? Yeah. And everybody was just like, I can't believe we're doing this. But wow. it, you have to. Yeah, I mean, right? Did it hit just lip or did it hit teeth? Like to just I, it mine just like on the lips. Uh, so we're lucky to have the facial hair. Yeah, he said to do not like you. You are not allowed to put it in your mouth. You can't like it. Lick just it? touch your lips and that's okay. it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, it's a mummified toe, so it's I push regardless of what you're doing, you're doing it. Like yeah. it's yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, a thing there. that happened. It's in a liquid. Yeah, that you're drinking, and it's Yukon Jack whiskey, man. It wasn't bad. Wow. Yeah. Oh, have you had Yukon Jack since? Yeah. I, was gonna say, I actually like it. Tastes the same. It's terrible. <laughs> I don't know if it, if it tastes like shit. I would. I'm. I'm now gonna try it, and it's gonna be my new favorite whiskey. No, it's pretty awful. <laughs> and, and, for, and, and that's good. It should. Yeah. Just a little toe flavor in every shot. Yeah, yeah, and then from there we, you know, spent a couple days there, and there, the so the Yukon is literally the middle of nowhere, especially yeah. Dawson City, right? Yeah, and. It involved mummified human toes, <laughs> negotiations in cryptocurrency, uh-huh. a Russian. Like there is, I got stories about this place. Oh for days. my god! Yeah, it, I remember before you, you told the story that the weird tire vendor. Yeah, that was yeah. the Russian guy. Yeah, he just had tires. He was a Russian dude that. So Marshall's still obsessed with finding tires. This random Russian guy's like, I have tires <laughs> for a KLR. Just like, exactly what? the bike. He exactly had. the bike that we were looking for tires for. Not only that, the dude. And he really did. Oh yeah, huh? and he was just. He was like, I just moved up here like seven days ago. Me and my KLR tires. Yeah, just and his, and his trailer. Freaking weird. He's like, I don't even have a motorcycle. I just have no. He had tires. three of them. <laughs> What's it's weird crazy. is he owned zero until he moved there, and he bought three of them on his way out of town. What? Yeah, it's dude, the whole thing is weird. I and like then, to meet people like that. Yeah, I mean, we we had a very interesting experience, and then I wow. so I've been to Dawson twice. Because we went from there, went part way up to Tuck, came back, stayed there again, and did you just, do the tow twice? No, we would stayed, you do it again? We, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We stayed in a different. <laughs> and lack of weird, right? the lack of hesitation, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> would you do the tow? I would totally do it. I would do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's not that bad. It's one of those things where it's when a place is famous for it, yeah. right? You've got to do it. Like I've done weird shit in other countries, and it's like, yeah. well, if the locals are doing it, and this is a tradition, sure, I'll do it. Oh, the locals are not doing it. Because here's the weird thing. I don't think the locals are real. Are they so I, I know this sounds weird, but the second standards. time we went back, uh-huh. right, we didn't see but maybe two people that we had seen before. That doesn't make sense. Like the guy that was the bartender before is now the band at the hotel. <laughs> and like we. It's like a good ghost story. We saw a guy that like we had hung out with and yeah. gone to a club with. Yeah. And he acted like he had never heard of us in his life. Oh, weird. Wow. It was strange. bizarre. Like, there was a lot of weird... That's super strange. It was... It was... Yeah. I'm pretty sure at some point we went through a portal to another dimension or yeah. another reality and then eventually came out of it. Have sure. you had a chance to travel anywhere anywhere strange? Uh, no. I haven't done a lot of strange travel. I like to get in trouble wherever I go. Well, yeah, that's kind of the bit. same way. Yeah, but like, now I, I want to. Just yeah. This. Like, I had the, the Facebook memories uh, yeah. yesterday show up, and it was when... Dave and I were go karting on the streets of Osaka. Yeah, I, that was yesterday. Yeah, yeah I saw that. Yesterday, six years ago. Yeah. Wow. And so it was kind of fun going back on that. I was like, well, I saw it because Dave showed it to me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then I posted my video because we both had video of that event. Yeah. But it was such a random adventure. So I've done weird stuff like that when you look yeah. back on it and you're like, I don't know if I'll have a chance to do that again, but that was pretty cool. Yeah. But this wasn't like a thing where I was purposely going to find something weird. Yeah. It was just weird stuff kept happening. That's right. That's fun. And that was that was awesome, but I like that. I've got you know stories like that. South America is, I think, more the stuff in South America was more just a test of your will to continue. 
really? on what certain days. Just like there was a day where I was riding and it was awesome. It was like your own little Dakar. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing. I was having such a good time and it's sprinkling and it's perfect conditions. Nice. But there's this river that I can see and I'm like, I want to get to the river. And so I find this little goat track. I take the bike out to mm-hmm. it and I'm like, as far as I dare go to it. And I, you know, go out and take pictures and it's this amazing glacial blue water. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. And going back to the road, I, of course, dropped the bike in like two feet of gravel and I spent an hour digging the thing out. And mm-hmm. that was like a test of like, dude, oh, yeah. I don't want to do this. This sucks. Yeah. But you're finally like, dude, I'm literally like standing in the middle of the road in my boxers because it's so hot while yeah. it's, it's still raining. But yes. I'm like, so, you know, I'm, yeah. oh man, I'm Ugh. super hot. And I finally get the bike out, get it stood up. And sure enough, here comes like, two dudes in a truck. And I'm like, where were you an hour ago? <laughs> <laughs> right? But I mean, that's part of being in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Like, oh, we yeah. were watching you on the camera and we saw you stripped down to your underwear. We thought we'd stay high. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. No, it was just a lot of stuff like that where you just, I didn't know. You know, that was the first, I haven't really ridden off-road for very long. Yeah. And that was the first like big trip that I did yep. by myself. That's crazy to do by yourself. Oh yeah, but that's it was cool. it was awesome. Yeah. yeah. It was him and it, you had a satellite phone, right? Or I have a, a the Garmin, Beacon. Beacon, yeah, I have a, a by InReach, but man, I admire that. That's really cool. Yeah, when oh, it, wow. when I booked the trip to the company, so I I did this all very hastily. I was like, inst- most people would take years to plan this thing. Safety I was like, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. a couple months. <laughs> so I found a company that I could rent the bike from. They booked all of my rooms, uh-huh. um, and basically told me go from here to here. Right. And I was like, cool, that's fine. I, that's great. Here's my goals of the trip, whatever it is I want to do. I did it all on a paper map, that's cool. which is fun. That's cool. Um, but the guy's like, okay, well, how many in your group? I was like, no, it's just me. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, we can do that. But are you sure? We've yeah. got a group on these dates. I was like, I don't want to meet people. I don't yeah. want to ride with these random people. Yeah, I just want to do this on my own. Bleh. It was awesome. Yeah. And it's not even about that I don't want to meet people because yeah. you meet really cool people on the road. Surely. But you, like New Year's Eve that time. So I did it over Christmas. Yeah. And New Year's of that year, I happened to be at this super fancy like eco resort. Uh-huh. And all these people pay a grip of money to be there, blah, blah, blah. I showed up t- to their New Year's dinner in a tuxedo t-shirt. <laughs> Which you'd pack knowing that yeah. you would be. Well, yeah. yeah. And so occasion. these folks yeah. didn't think it was as funny as I did. But <laughs> one table was like, that is amazing. And I hung out with them all night. Ah, so it was nice. meeting those kind of people was cool. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's... A lot of interesting stories. The Dawson story, though. I mean, that is weird. <laughs> that it's, cool. it's weird, man. There's some weird stuff that's happened. But I love it. And I don't, like I said, it's not about going to weird places or trying to do weird things. No. It's just the weird just shit happens. that happens. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, I mean, have you read any weird shit happen to you, like at a Formula Drift event or just like on route or just in? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you and, and I, I always look. I'm pretty good at in the moment not getting frustrated when weird stuff happens. Right. You know, and you go, well, we're not going to die, right. probably. Probably. I mean, probably. Your situation, yeah. you might have, <laughs> but <laughs> not me. You know, like, yeah. And you end up getting clever. You know, like one time we were, we were uh, so I used to do a lot, a lot of events, a lot of drift events. Right. And I would do ones where it's like there's a competition on Arizona and Saturday, and there's one on Sunday in California, and we'd hit both in the Oof. weekend. You know, just beating the piss out of this poor S13. Um, and we had one where I forgot to bring a jack, which is okay at a drift yeah. event because everyone's got a jack. Right. Uh, and on that event in the middle of the desert between then and here in the you middle flat. of the night, we got a flat tire on the trailer. Of course. Which is, you know, great. Yeah. And uh, the dude who, who I'd always travel with is this old Filipino guy named Chris. And he was just, he's li- one of those guys that's lived a crazy life. Like, yeah. Came here. Stood up this great uh, Calvin Klein copycat jean uh, <laughs> downtown LA warehouse. The, yeah. You know, FBI bus. Oh no! <laughs> no. This, Dude, this guy, he's, this guy's phenomenal. That's awesome. And he was making body kits for quite a while, and so I was his driver for his stuff, and we were we were buddies. And he's like, he's probably sixty something. Yeah. He's always been a lot older than me, and um, and he's just he's just kind of like looking around. He's like, Colin, grab this spare wheel. I was like, okay. So he grabs one of the spares. And because it's a double axle trailer. Yeah, it drives up on it. I was like, how the hell did I not think of that? It's just just like such a simple, like, kind of looked at it. I was like, yep, we'll do it. That kind of stuff. So it was so fun. I like the, you got to figure out how to get out of the conundrum. Yeah, the the MacGyver engineering or whatever it takes to to solve the problem. Yeah. Well, this is another Alaska story. So it was four guys that I met. And then we ended up, like, we're friends still to this day. But two of the guys are brothers. Mm Mm-hmm. One of the brothers, the two brothers, so the two guys that aren't brothers decide they're going to go all the way to Tuck, which is up Tuck Toy Tuck. It's on the Arctic Ocean on the Canadian side. Mm-hmm. 
the three of us was like, I, I actually just want to go up to Dead Horse, so we're just going to go do that. Mm-hmm. So we're on our way up to Dead Horse, you know, days later or whatever, and there's a bunch of other weird shit that's happened in between, but on the road to Dead Horse, we're hauling ass, and I realize I haven't seen these guys in like five minutes, and they were slow, uh-huh. er, I should say. <laughs> Not that they're slow, but they're slower, like, yeah. riders than me, and that's fine. So I turn around and go back, and they're standing on the side of the road, staring at a bike with no chain on it. So the chain had snapped. Mm. Like, mm-hmm. Fix it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was like, do you have the parts? Yes. Oh. Huh. Okay, so fix it. I don't know how. So you're in the middle of nowhere, Alaska, <laughs> right? <laughs> on a bike, and you don't know how to fix it. Why does this make so much sense? Yeah. Was was the other two guys the ones that would have known how to fix yes. it? Okay. Oh, I yes. Yes. Yeah. So they're, you know, obviously not there, but he looks at me and he's like, can you do it? I'm like, well, I can, but I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not, I'm not t- changing it. Yeah. Get the parts out. So I walked him through it. I yeah, talked him yeah, through yeah. it. But that was like one of those things at the same deal. Like, yeah. what were you going to do? Yeah. yeah. Take your right? pants off. What happens? Well, and then, so, <laughs> right, we get the bike fixed and everything. And we, I'm like, we got to go right now because there's something big in the bushes. And as really? we take off, I look in my mirror and a grizz came out of the no, of the yeah. Shit. It was pretty Ooh. gnarly. Yeah, it was yeah, fun though. That's cool. Yeah, another like weird that. trip. Yeah, that strange. But you gotta. I mean, getting in those situations, half of the fun is how you got there. Oh yeah, yeah. right. That's the adventure. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, what's that quote? Is that uh, adventure doesn't start until things go wrong? Yeah, I yeah. think that's right. I like it. Yeah, that's how I live my life. Apparently. <laughs> 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 what about you, Grace? You want to take a big adventurous trip? What's the craziest thing you'd want to do? We just did a random adventure on Friday. On so, Friday? Yeah. So uh, are you this, out of school? Yeah. He 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 finished oh. school on January or January, wow. July, June, <laughs> I don't, June. He finished June second. All right. I think his last day of school, June first. Yeah. So anyway, so he's out of school, and so last Friday was my first summer Friday. So we get basically my company allows us to leave early. Yeah, we do that on week. Fridays through the yeah. through through summer, and so I took off early, and it was something that we had seen on social media, and in, oh yeah, in uh, Joshua Tree, Cheez Its had taken over an old service station and turned it into like this so random brand experience thing. Yeah, yeah, it was on Twenty Nine Palms Highway out in Joshua Tree, and I was like, oh, that looks kind of fun. I'm like, like maybe a, we'll take a road trip out there, like a gas station. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, oh, that looks kind of fun. Maybe we'll go out there. And then I look into it, and it's like, oh, they're only doing this for a week. They started. They opened on Monday. Oh, and, I didn't know it was only a week. And it closes Sunday. Oh. I'm like, oh, I kind of want to go. And they had like merchandise. They had special edition cheese. It flavors. They use the pump. Y- yes, into the mouth. No, it's, no I think they, it's bags though. They had a, uh, yeah. a ginormous gas nozzle pump that flung bags of cheese. It's out. So weird. <laughs> and so we're like, all right, we'll go check it out. I'm like, okay, Friday. Was it crowded? Surprisingly, yes. Yeah. And so it's a two-hour drive yeah. from from our house. So we we get out there. We we stop in Banning for some some nutritious del taco. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. And Banning is bun taco. Uh, I didn't think to even try it in Banning. Oh. What is your del taco order? My normal. Mm-hmm. If if I don't care, it's straight up the, the number one. The the two del tacos, crunchy or soft. Yeah. Um, and then the fries and a drink. But mm-hmm. if I if I'm at Barstow, at the OG del taco, I'll get yeah. the I'll get a. Bun taco. taco. That's a King's Del Taco. Yeah. That's really good. And can I ask you one more quick question about Del Taco? Yeah. Can I ask you guys feelings on when they went from the yellow cheese to the queso? They did that? Uh, yeah, they went from nacho cheese. Yeah, I don't, oh, I don't, I don't do the nachos, nachos, so I don't really now. care. Yeah, no. Because I'm usually fries, and I, I do it, the Inferno salsa to mm-hmm. ketchup pack at one-to-one ratio. Oh, okay. oh interesting. And get a little spicy ketchup. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to try that. I've been doing that since, like, high school. I'm a chicken <laughs> quesadilla. That's basically what I get. That's yeah. Good. Yeah, those are good. Yeah. But um, so we stop in Banning, and then we, we take our, our neighbor, uh, Grayson's buddy Carson, and it's his birthday. Oh, nice. And he had never been to the Cabazon Dinosaurs. Uh-huh. We're like, well, we have to stop there. So we stopped in Cabazon, saw the dinosaurs, yeah. and then drove the rest of the way out to Joshua Tween. So we get there, and it's an old service shop, uh, service station that had been turned into, like, a, a tourist trap, uh, tchotchke, sure. roadside attraction mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Cheese it took it over, redecorated the whole place, and took over the the sales floor with all this merchandise. They had a, a Myers Manx. They had some other Volkswagen based weird kit car thing sitting there. They had a a, a, a mustard gold Econoline van and a bunch <laughs> of like Cheese It's merch so all over the place. Did you buy a Cheese It shirt? They were all sold out of oh, every goddamn funny. thing except boxes of Cheese Its. Yeah. Which no one wants regular Cheese Its. Exactly. Well, I don't have to buy them there. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, Target. You would think that if the brand was selling it, it would be cheaper than it would be at the store. Yeah. It was five bucks a goddamn box. 
That's a, like, I don't know how much cheese it's are anyways. That's pretty much retail. Oh, got it. Yeah. You would think it was like two bucks a box or something cheap. It'd yeah, be yeah. Fine. Well, it may be that the distributor. I don't know. I don't know, but don't it's know a branding experience. You would yeah. think you would like that's some agency thing. Yeah, yeah sure. you you would like get like drugs. Pumped. You give them the free samples to get them oh, hooked. You don't yeah. charge retail on the first. Wait, did they try. charge you for the pump thing? No, that was free. So the pump thing, they shot like bags of. of uh, individual packages of, of cheese at bags. Yeah, yeah. And so we got, I think we ended up, the three of us ended up with probably like 12 bags. That's no, a lot yeah, of cheese. Carson got six and we both got three. Normal yeah. flavor? Yeah, normal yeah. flavor. Do you okay. guys have a favorite cheese at? Puffed. Puff? Puffed is good. Have you tried the spicy puffed? No. The spicy puffed spicy, is delicious. Yeah, spicy puffed is good. Yeah. And then the cheese it, <laughs> they also have like the, the weird like cheese it version of Chex Mix. Where it's got like Cheez Its and it's got like puffs and it's oh, got a bunch okay. of other stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. It's like it's like munchies. Huh. Oh, is it actually I munchies? Think it might be munchies, yeah. I am familiar but with the Cheez Its, those are pretty good. Mm -hmm. But um so yeah, there's a line to get in. You get in and then they go, Okay, go find this other person that's got the same uniform and they're basically wearing like mechanics jumpsuits, like yeah. short sleeve jumpsuits that have the Cheez It patch on it and stuff. <laughs> Then they give you like a little paper bag and they slap a cheese sticker on it. And there's a line for a photo op in a white Volkswagen Westphalia uh -huh. that's just got a cheese it graphic across the bottom door and the slider's open. I'm like, I don't need a picture on the side of a van. I'm like, what does the bag have to do with the Volkswagen? Nothing. But the oh, bag is how you get the gas pump to oh, fill it up. Uh, got it. So then you walk around to the front of the, the gas station attraction and inside the, uh, the convenience store part, they have all the products there. But that's all they have left, and so it's their display stuff, and they don't want to sell it because then it looks empty. And they were teasing more stuff than they were actually selling. Like they had chocolate flavored chocolate, which was really just chocolate of random. Yeah, chocolate flavored chocolate. Or cheese it flavored oh, chocolate. Oh, okay. that, that makes more. Wait, sense. is it cheese it flavored chocolates or chocolate flavored cheeses? No, it was. No, it was cheese it flavored chocolate. Yeah, it was a chocolate oh, bar that was cheese it flavored. That's they had. Gross. It was just fake branding. Fake branding on the stuff oh, merchandise oh. out there, but they had. They had free postcards, but those were all gone. Sure. They had free bumper stickers. Those were all gone. They had Hawaiian shirts. They had different t-shirt designs. They had duffel bags. They had igloo coolers, like all branded what? with like the... And you couldn't buy any of it because it was gone. Correct. It's all there in the store, but you couldn't buy it because yeah. that was the last ones they had and they needed the store to look pretty until What's the event done? was done on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. And then the duffel bags, they were given out for free, but there was only like 50 per day and first come, first serve. And the People were lining up at nine o'clock in the morning before the the venue even opened at like ten. We got to do it for the gram, bro. I didn't have to do it for the gram that much. No, I'm sure that's what they. They're <laughs> yeah, doing yeah. For it. It's yeah. A good thing so, to so we we do this whole experience, and it's just we went we we spent basically five hours in a car for regular flavored Cheez Its that we got for free. <laughs> so <But I> mean, <laughs> when you look back on it, you're like, oh, well, that was part of the adventure. It was yeah, kind of yeah. fun. Those are always fun trips. Yeah, and that was honestly my first time to Joshua Tree. Like, I had never really, really ventured out there. Hmm. There's some cool stuff out there. There is, but I hadn't ever been yeah, out yeah. there. So mm. it was kind of a, a, a nice way to just kind of kill an afternoon. Yeah. But then it totally changed the vibe for the weekend because come Saturday, it felt like it was already Sunday because yeah. I had this crazy Friday adventure mm. already. Right. So it's been a productive weekend. I was supposed to be productive yesterday, and then I watched Lamal. Yeah. What were you supposed to be doing? Moving? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's doing, more fun than moving. I think so. Yeah. Well, I met Drew. We went walked the dogs at Irvine Park, and then came over here. And then Dave and Sarah showed up, and oh, what was that? There you go. Yeah, a whole day of race cars. There you go. Not mad at that. Its own kind of productive. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah. I did a bunch of stuff. I got to go back and do more. But yeah, next week it's kind of the same thing where it's like I've already got a bunch of stuff planned. Where it's just like that weekend's gonna go fly by. Yeah, I think we're we're gonna try to hit up the uh, California Science Center. Mm -hmm. On Saturday. Which is cool. Because Grace and I have tickets to see Blink-182 right. Saturday night. And yeah, then, the shuttle's pretty rad. And then on Sunday, it's Father's Day. Um, so I'm told. Yeah, yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah. you know, I've got a kid, so I, yeah, guess yeah. I get to do stuff. But uh, Grace and I actually have tickets to go to Angel Stadium. It's Dad's Day at the Big A, so we get to go on the field and play catch. That's oh, cool. I saw that. Yeah, and I've done yeah. that a couple years back. And yeah, so that's cool. They hadn't done it for a while because of the pandemic, and so this is our first chance to do it. Since we first did There's it. no game, right? No game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we did it in, 20, I think, 2019. Uh -huh. So now we're doing it again four years later. Um, but it's just kind of funny. He gets to go play in the, the batting cages that the players use. That's cool. That's cool. And playing catch on the field is fun. Yeah. Even though we haven't been to a game yet this season, it's still kind of fun to be out on the field. But we'll, we'll probably catch a game or two later. I need to go to another game. It's been a while. It's been a couple weeks. I was going to say, you've been <laughs> a whole bunch. I've been to a few this season. Yeah. Good, yeah. Yeah, it's been fun. I want to try and see Otani again before he's gone. 
Yeah. That seems like that's going to happen, huh? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the feeling you yeah. get, right? He wants to go somewhere. I mean, he's going to get a huge contract wherever he goes. Yeah. He wants to go somewhere. He's going to be competitive. Do you think he's going to stay West Coast? Like LA, San Francisco? I don't like, think he'd go to LA. I don't know. Like, I just, I feel like that would be a dishonorable move he to go have like to, your direct rival. He wouldn't have to move. He'd That's keep true. his house. Yeah. You know, still like, I'm pretty his, sure he's not worried about having to buy another house with yeah, the money he's got. It's probably kind of fun when you're super rich. Right. Oh, I get yeah. to choose another one. Yeah, it's Someone be, else is going to move all my shit. It's such a rough life. Is, like, if you're a baseball player, do you even bother moving? Because you're on the road for so much. It's like you're never really home anyways. So That's probably true. What yeah. difference is it? in an make? apartment? Like, Apparently he lived could. in those apartments uh, in the parking lot at Angel Stadium when he first <laughs> came over here. Do you not know he's rich? Yeah, I, I guess it's just where he lived for the first like you however long. Like, yeah. yeah. He's right there. Walk to you know. Walk to practice. I think I have fun. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, and not like he knew anybody. Yeah. yeah other than his too. his translator guy. So when we were at the HRE uh, Wheels Open House, there was a uh, Bugatti Chiron that was on display, and it had a custom license plate that said Helby. Huh? Because it's a Bugatti, and it's it, it had some cool paint job. It it's was... yellow and black, so it looks like a bumblebee. Uh, okay. The guy that owns it. Is the co-founder of Tilly's, the the the, yeah, yeah. the teen fashion clothing brand? Yeah, I learned that today. And the dude's like a gazillionaire, oh, yeah. and yeah. he's got several Bugattis. And I'm like, <laughs> it's a lot of Hurley backpacks. Yeah, right. yeah, or those RSQ jeans, like the private labeled brand stuff that they sell at Tilly's. But that's what like blew my mind is the yeah the yeah. co-founder of a teen f- fashion store. Because they don't have that many locations, I don't think. Like uh, maybe fifty. Southern California, north. They're in Northern California. Yeah, now. yeah. Mm. But like, mostly Western U.S. I think so. Yeah. But I mean, there's still California surf culture. True. That's a lot of lots of lots of middle school people yeah. in there. Yeah. I, I, I bought, mean, bought a lot of stuff there. Well, there you go. But it was yeah. just kind of surprising that that's the kind of money that I guess you, you make in retail. See, if that's I had that kind of money, I would not buy a Bugatti. I've always a said the Lambo same thing. or a, I don't get it. If I was a billionaire, like if you yeah. had infinite money, what car would you we, not we've, buy? We've had it. Oh, what not, not buy? Yeah, I would not I would buy. literally, if I had all the money in the world, I don't really want one of those Bugattis. No, no. I don't of, want a Rolls. Ugly. Yeah, I don't want a Rolls. I don't get it. No. Anything that's designed like for a, to have a chauffeur, I'm not yeah, in. Yeah, I don't want that. Like a Maybach? No, thank yeah. you. What's on your no... no that, buy that really ugly AM General uh, accessible vehicle. That's, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, There's a couple ugly, of those around. Weird yeah. van thing. Yeah, 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 that yeah. Thing, I, that, it almost looks like a taxi. Yeah, yeah, it just hurts my eyes to look at it. So I would never buy that, even though it's not expensive. It's just yeah, yeah. Never buy 300 that. SL. What? If you, if you had a lot of money, a 300 SL would be cool. Yeah. We we've talked about this before. We think that the 911 because it's such a sleeper supercar. You know, it's like yeah. it does all sorts yeah. of cool stuff, but it's just a Porsche. <laughs> it doesn't look anything super crazy. And yeah. I just don't. I just don't like modern like the McLarens and the Mer- the you know the Lambos and the Ferrari. They just don't do it. Yeah, I and lost lost interest in Ferrari a little while ago. Lambos are still kind of cool. They do that like but they all look the same. They make like three thousand horsepower. But they all look the same. That's true. It's they the do. same car with just different paint and extra shit on it. <laughs> yeah. Grayson got to spend some seat time in a McLaren Senna yesterday. Another car I don't get. And the interesting thing was, is the owner yeah. is like twenty. Yes. Young Crypto age. bro? No, I think... What does he do? Yeah, I, I want to say he, he it might be daddy's money. Well, that would make but sense. The, I don't know how you could come to that conclusion based on like, <laughs> 20 years old. Are you kidding me? Most yeah. 20-year-olds can but, buy a Senna. They just don't want to. Yeah, but exactly. In the guy's defense, he was at least half Asian, so he could have been 40. But you can't tell. But the the, okay. the, the blonde girlfriend was definitely like... 20. Also doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 True. But they, they looked like they matched. Like they looked like they could have stepped out of high school musical. I just, the McLarens are so cold Speed and tail. like yeah. designed by a computer, not yeah. a person feel. I just, yeah. I don't get it. Feels a little too alien for me. Yeah. I'd you rather know. have something very old. A Falcon Rally Mexico would be cool to have. <laughs> I would take a Mira. Mirrors yeah, okay. Yeah. That's a, a great car. Yeah. But that's different, right? What about a Countach? Oh, yeah. 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 That's heavy on the dream list. Yeah. yeah. I would say, though, you know, if you ever do have the opportunity to look underneath one, just don't. <laughs> like, most of those cars were built by drunk Italians. 
and they, they are just bad. Well, it's either the drunk Italian that built it originally or any the of one the that shops that have worked on yeah. it in yeah. the meantime. Yeah. Like following Matt Farah and seeing his chronicles of getting his his uh, Countach repaired or right. just getting everything like, fixed on it, and now he's getting his Ferrari done. It's been interesting. Like I think on one of them, he showed the door panel come off, and like there was uh, drywall screws holding stuff together. Just that somebody had thought... The best part is you probably don't know if that's factory or if somebody <laughs> yeah. did that on there, you know, yeah. later, yeah. But speaking of Matt Fair, so he had his... Um, I'm sorry, it's ugly. His... <laughs> it's so ugly. That it, paint color is terrible. His, art, his Boxster's uh, his boxer. Spider. It, it's the cast... It's not cast as red. It's, it's, no, um, it's pink. It's it's frozen berry um, Yeah, it's got a metallic. weird name. It's like a yeah. pink... It's like a Cold Stone flavor? Basically. But over, I see this. over a red black not interior. It? I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, it's a, Grayson, let me see my phone real quick. It is not. I, I get a lot of people think it's amazing and they love it. It's a spider. Cool. Yeah. I also don't get the spiders. I, it just It's such a oh. bad color. I like the yeah. color. I think it's fun. That, so th- that falls into this category for me of like trying to please the other Porsche guys rather than this is what I He really was trying to do it to love. piss off the other Porsche guys. because oh, like it's, it's for someone else. You know, that's all, yeah. uh, kind of what I'm getting. Yeah. At, you yeah. Know? yeah. I, I just but I, if, he had a 911 in Cassis Red, which is that's the very similar color. Uh huh. So I think it's just kind of he likes the color, and in his his idea being by doing this color, it's actually more valuable, even though it's less desirable at first. Yeah, probably. Because it's but rare. that's also rare. a nah, that's also a cheesy thing to, to look at. It but anyway, way. so I, I get what the, you want. I see yeah. the car. I take pictures of it. Whatever. Yeah. And then yesterday, I got to take Jeanette to the airport. Uh-huh. So we're driving up on the 405, heading to LAX. And I see Matt in his oh, uh, yeah. in his box Going there. Home. Yeah, so I roll down my window, or Jeanette rolls down her window, and then I'm thinking he's confused, looking at why this blonde lady's rolling down her window. And then I yell across from the driver's seat, uh, saying that we we saw him in the car at, at uh, HRE, and he gives gave us a nice wave and said hi, right, thanks, and yeah. then kept going. The car sounds mean. He's got a. Uh, Motor swap on it. You went to a four and a half liter. Which I don't understand. Motor. I was talking to somebody about this yesterday. Mm. What, how are they getting away with doing these motor swaps on brand new cars? This just sounds really expensive. I well, think it's just not what, only expensive, but where is the thing registered? And like, how are they not getting called out? Like, I don't, I don't understand. Well, you don't have to smog them for like five years. New cars. That's right? true. Yeah, yeah. I think it's probably a kick down the road kind of issue. Could be. Well, yeah, I don't know. Or you just go get Montana plates because I think it's yeah. That's, yeah. that's always a factor. He had, it was rolling on dealer plates, like California dealer plates. Mm. Oh, they and. Need to uh, yeah, and then the uh, I think it's just a punched up version of the stock Boxster, or not the stock, but a Boxster motor. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know exactly what emissions controls have been bypassed or are yeah, unavailable. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Assuming it's all there and it's just a larger displacement, it could be fine. I don't know. Like, yeah. Get away with it. Yeah. But it sounded healthy on the on the highway. Like yeah, once I'm we sure. once traffic started moving again, it sounded good. I just don't like the color. Like I just think it's. It feels like it's, it's bad for, for something other than because I love this. Right. And I don't like when decisions are made that way. And I mean, it, and it feels like it's for the gram kind of that yeah, in that category, yeah. you know, I if, could you, see that. if you're going to get, I mean, if I was to go out and buy a 911, uh, guards green is a great color, like a darker green okay. would be a good color. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to do it obnoxious, it's going to be something like froggy green or Miami fluorescent blue. yellow or a right. Like I'm just, just be annoying about I, it. I'm a know? fan of a bright, bold blue. Dude, actually, I don't like the new uh, BMW design language, but we saw a purple something the other day. <laughs> I don't know. They all look the freaking same. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was like a deep purple. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. Right. It was such a good color. Mm. Like, and that See, that's a good color. But yeah. this weird metallic light pink. Yeah. He's mm. nicknamed the car Shar- Strawberry Shortcake. Yeah. Which fits. Yes. But yeah. This it's, is it's, second. It's, the first one got drowned in the ocean. Yes. Yeah. It in Miami or something? No, no, no was he, that? the tanker or the the oh, car transporter that that the uh, boat sank. that sank, yeah, with a bunch of Lambos and yeah. Porsches and and yeah. actually, Tom, he was like, oh crap, I wonder if my car's on that, and luckily was not. He lucked he out. His car. Yeah, yeah. Tom and I were, were swapping barbecue restaurant tips in San Diego because huh? like, oh yeah, every time I'm in San Diego, I like Phil's barbecue. He's like, ah, oh, that one corporate sellout. He's like, you got to check out this place called Coop's Barbecue. Yeah. So now, next time I'm down in San Diego, I'm heading You know, Heritage place. opened an actual place in San Diego. Do they really? I still haven't made it to Heritage. Oh, Heritage. my God. It's dude. so good. But it's I've also so heard good. it's overrated. No. No? It's one of the few places that I would that I would avoid saying it's overrated. Yeah. Like, right. genuinely. It's yeah. super good. It's that good. And so the Science place in San Diego is like a regular restaurant. Did oh, you guys good. go, like, wait in line, like, before opening kind of thing? Or did you just wait or just show up and stand in whatever line was there? 
I've only just ever stood in line. Okay. Yeah. I, I had it when it was the, you know, the brewery down mm-hmm. here. They yeah. had the brewery to row in uh, Anaheim. Yep. They just happened to be there. I didn't oh, know. Oh, that's cool. Oh. And yeah. I went and I tried. I'm like, holy shit, this is like the best thing we've ever had. It's and so good. My neighbor from across the street was friends with the guy. He's mm-hmm. like, oh, it's my old buddy that does this. He calls a heritage barbecue. And he's going to open this place down here. So it kind of happened into it. Yeah. Man, what a talent. Uh, that's good stuff. Really good stuff. Now I'm hungry. Now and I'm I get like now. annoyed because I feel like, and I think we've talked about this before. I don't like going to a place and eating something and paying money for it when I can do it better. Yeah. Right. And that's, I hate to sound like a snooty guy, but I'm a pretty good cook. And so that does get really frustrating. So like, but that's places like, yeah, they do it. I you can't should, do barbecue that good. You should try Ryan's hot pocket. <laughs> the way I microwave that thing. Yeah. 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 Much it's better for cheese or store pepperoni bond. situation. No. <laughs> I've actually got, I have a, um, uh, corn, thingy corned beef jesus man i've got a corned beef i need to debrine i'm gonna make into pastrami oh nice that's gonna be my project yeah all right we're gonna get going i'm I'm getting hungry now i know i am hungry i didn't eat lunch oh what the hell i don't know i've been busy with tv no no no. i've been dude (laughs) i actually just like right before you guys got here i just got back oh i've been out running around well welcome back thank you all right now let's get out of here okay goodbye (laughs) (laughs) bye 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 say goodbye bye there you go You've been listening to the Ungrown Ups Podcast, and for this, we apologize.